Hello, hello, everybody. We are continuing our Ace Attorney journey. Last time, we got Mr. Ron Delight acquitted of being a thief, only for his alibi to then turn him into the prime suspect of a murder case. So, yeah. We're gonna see where this goes. Hibbledy jibbledy. That's really all there is. Also, there was like hints of Wendy Old Bag, the witch wicked witch of the witness stand, existing in this universe once more to haunt us. But we are going to see if. And uh, nope, not there. Uh, oh yeah. Because last time, what we did was we talked to. Larry. And we got just a little bit of information, the buzzer record, that it did indeed go off. Do we need to show that? Maybe we should need to show that to the boy, the man, this guy, Gumshoe. Maybe not, but let's see. Nope, that's just the same. He has nothing to say about it. Maybe if we examine the buzzer again? No. Hmm. Then again, I doubt there would be much to do. Because the only other thing left that we can really do, I think, is Andrew's Cyclox. But I don't know. Hmm. So let's see. Because I think we talked to just about everybody, and there isn't really much evidence, so... Hmm. Guess all that there is is to... Talk to Andrews, I suppose? I think. Hmm. Let's see, is there... Did we miss anything? Is there anything? Because, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, because... I, but I don't think we have the evidence for the Cyclock. Because for the Cyclock, the initial thing was prove that the Diddly D was different. So I just have the feeling... Hmm... Let's maybe click it again. Know anything about the sacred urn? Miss Delight found it, but it looks different. Causes the Cyclock. Hmm. And that's it. It's all she wrote. Come to think of it, I wonder why she's hesitant about it being different. It was covered in paint. I don't know. But yeah, we don't have the evidence, I think, to do anything about that. There's nothing really here because we don't have the urn with us, so we can't just present it and be like, it's different from the picture. And we can't present the urn anymore. It's funny that before when the urn was lost, we could technically present it to people. But then once the urn was like, actually found, it is then taken away from us. Hmm. I guess... Because we did just finish off, like, interrogating Larry. So let's just quickly bounce around, see if there's anything different. Because that's basically the only thing you can really do. Love at first sight for her. Because Ron saved her. Hmm. Nope. Hmm. Nothing new. And I don't think there's anything pertinent to 
Hmm. Well, let's see. So what do we do now? Isn't it obvious we should get out there and investigate the murder? Well, first we need to find out exactly where KB... Well, we already know that. So this is like the where do we go if you stop immediately after... Diddly D and maybe talk about the Sacred Urn. You must be relieved we got the Sacred Urn back, huh? You bet. But there's something a little different about it. Don't... <laughs> Did you just notice... The, 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 what is it? The punctuation mark in the air? Don't question mark at me. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? I mean, take a look at this. It clearly says I am on the urn in the poster. But the urn we got back says Ami, like it always used to. Oh, yeah. You're right. Plus, the vase has pink splotches on it now. I'm sure they weren't there before. Maya doesn't know, but one year ago when the urn was broken, the repairer accidentally turned Mystic Ami's name into I Am. And that repairer was one mechanically unskilled little pearls. But still, I don't remember ever seeing pink splotches on it. Is it possible that that urn is a fake? I'm sure pearls will find out about that once she gets back to Curing Village. Yeah, I suppose. Now I think about it. Maya hasn't been back to Curing Village in a long time. Ah, interesting. So, I guess people still go to Curing Village to do their training, right? Yep, if you want to become a spirit medium, you need to undergo severe training. So why haven't you been training lately, Maya? Well, lately I've been thinking of heading to a channeling dojo to do just that. A channeling dojo, huh? Sounds pretty serious, whatever that is. If you're going to train, you have to be serious. Otherwise, real tragedies can happen. Is what happened last year still bothering you? That murder in her village. It happened because the power of channeling was misused. When a medium uses the curing technique, she temporarily loses her own will. So when an especially strong spirit is summoned, the spirit medium can get taken over and even forced to commit terrible crimes. But that's not what happened. What's worse, in most cases, the spirit medium has no memory of what happened. That murder. It wasn't your fault, Maya. You know that, don't you? Especially because it wasn't even a spirit that you channeled. It was somebody hiding in a trunk who came out, drugged you, and then shot the guy. Well, technically, she, they stabbed them and then shot the guy. I suppose not, but I guess I'm still a bit shaken up, that's all. Sounds like being a master of curing is going to be a heavy responsibility. Yeah, at least we got that. But, hmm. Back here, maybe. But, but, but we were just, we were just here! What did I do? Did the game need, did, 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 did the game need me to ask about curing village? For this to progress? But we were just here! Weren't we? Am I insane? Have I lost my mind? What is going on? We were just here, and it was nothing. We didn't progress anything. We didn't do anything new. We just talked, like, just... Ah, Mr. Wright! Mr. Delight, did they finish their interrogation? Yes, but... Please don't leave me alone anymore! Mr. Delight, you lied to us before, didn't you? Well, uh, you see... On the night the sacred urn was stolen from Lordly Taylor Department Store, a blackmail letter you got summoned... A letter you got summoned you to KB Security to hand over some money. And then, that's where the CEO, Kane Bullard, was murdered. But there's only one Ron Delight, am I right? So the only question is, where were you that night? This time I want to hear the whole truth. Your life depends on it. Okay. Mr. Delight, do you still insist that you're mask to mask? Isn't that what I've been saying since yesterday? That was a quick response. Tell me about it. To be honest, it's starting to get irritating. B but listen, Mr. Delight. At the trial today, we learned the true identity of the thief, didn't we? <laughs> oh, yeah! Take a good look, everyone! 
Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself! Here I am! The tragic clown! I guess it's true. I wasn't the one who stole that urn. Of course not. After all, you were at KB Security at the time. So then the person dressed up as Mask to Mask in this photo, it's gotta be Detective Atme. So that night, you didn't go to Lordly Taylor, you went to KB Security, right? Yes, I went to KB Security at the time. The blackmail note said I should. All right, what happened next? Well, I used to work there, so I knew where the CEO's office was. I knocked, but there was no answer. So then I used the key card to unlock the door. That's probably when he dropped his wallet. When I went into the CEO's office, someone was in there. Someone? But how could Atme have been there? That was Atme's... Atme doctored the photo. Because while he didn't have strict access to the sensors or the camera, he developed the software. He could have easily had it uh, read the wrong time. And that would also explain why Atme knew about the blackmail letter. So Luke Atme was probably being blackmailed by KB Security. That's why they were taking note of the diddly D. And then maybe Luke Atme started to... Okay. A series of events... Wait, but... Mm... But they said that Luke at uh, they said that Ron was fired like a year ago, right? Right? Well, anyway, we're quickly doing a diddly d. If we assume, because that person in the background, that security officer, they said when we first got this, Phoenix and Maya said we can't make out who that is in the background, but they seem familiar. So if that's Ron. Presumably, if that is Ron, then Luke would know of Ron. So maybe at some point, because again, Ron is like insisting that he is mask to mask, but even he seems like confused about things. So maybe Luke at me was making Ron's delusions worse. To make him believe that he is Mask to Mask. And then... Or... And then... Perhaps the, the, the security agency figured out that... Atme was Mask to Mask and started blackmailing him. That's why they're like, ah... Like, this is worth this much. This is worth that much. Hello there. I'm right now rattling off ideas because we just saw a flash of Detective Atme's silhouette in the KB security office, CEO office, and apparently Ron got smashed over the head. So I'm just wondering, this is like series of events, what's going on? My theory is that Atme killed the CEO because the CEO was blackmailing him because of this listing off far lower prices to, like, the tier of on these artifacts and jewelries and good things that he, at me was stealing, the, dete the security head guy figured out it was at me somehow and started blackmailing him. But I'm still wondering, like, then I don't know why... The only thing that would make sense when it comes to, like, the blackmail written, presumably to Ron is if Atme was, like, making Ron's delusions in the first place or making them worse, making him think that he was mask to mask. I don't know why. He's a madman, so who knows? But in the end, Atme wanted... Ah, maybe Atme, want, Atme wanted Ron to take the fall. 
<laughs> You're just gonna have to keep playing then. Exactly, but I'm just trying to work it out in my head and have it on the record. What, another one of my crazy theories, but yeah. At some point, At Me wanted to make Ron into a patsy and wanted him to take the fall for the murder of the... But then... But no, that wouldn't make sense because... The thievery... Eh, it's crazy. <laughs> It'll reveal itself eventually. But yeah, in the end, At Me doctored the photo because he made the software on the computer. So while Lordly Taylor provided the camera and the sensors that monitored the warehouse basement, Detective Atme was the one who made the computer software, and I think he... <laughs> I was a bit confused towards the end of the trial. <laughs> that sometimes happens. I just kind of bumbled my way through the circus one. I did not <laughs> know exactly how it went down. It was far simpler than I theorized. <laughs> I'm still confused about this case and all the motivations, which is why I'm watching it again. Uh -huh. But yeah, Atme doctored the software so that the photo said that it was at one, but he probably did it later. Atme killed the security head guy because the security head guy was presumably blackmailing Atme. And for some reason, may, actually, maybe, maybe Atme had like nothing to do? Hmm. I don't know. It's weird. This is all kind of weird and wonky, but we'll get to this. Yeah, the main thing that I'm wondering why is why does Ron have the outfit? Well, maybe he'll say. We'll see. Then suddenly they bashed me over the head. Bam! And all of this is just because Detective Atme's silhouette flashed on the screen, by the way. That's it. That's where all of this came from. <laughs> Was it King Bullard that hit you? I don't know. The person ran away while I was still stunned. When I came to my senses, the sight I saw left me speechless. The dead body of the CEO was right there in front of me. I thought I'd die myself. That is a very unflattering death pose. Anyway, I thought I should do something with the body. So that's why you put it in the safe? Yes, that's right. He does seem like a panicky person. I used to be the, the chief of one of the security teams, so I knew how to open it. And they didn't reset that security after they got rid of him? <laughs> Honestly, he kind of deserved what happened. Okay, and what did you do after that? Well, I got out of there, for starters. I was the one who set up the security cameras in that building. So I knew how to avoid being spotted by them. Nick, all of a sudden, Mr. Delight kind of sounds like the murderer to me. Please don't say that. And why were you fired? Mr. Delight, is it true that one year ago, you were forced to quit KB Security? Ah, how did you... I'm begging you! Please don't tell Desi, please! Completely unrelated, but is it getting hot for you where you live? Kind of. It's definitely hot outside, but luckily we have good insulation and air conditioning. And when I'm not streaming, my fan is on like 24-7. <laughs> so at least I'm not dying terribly. And remember to stay hydrated <laughs> while you are burning in the Texas heat. D don't worry, we haven't told anyone yet. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, no, I, um, uh, but I suppose I'll have to tell her sometime. She'll find out eventually. Hi, good to hear. I recently got an AC myself. Haha! -ha! Hope it is nice and comfy. Why have you been hiding it from her anyway? Desi would despise me if she ever found out that I was living a life of crime. <laughs> oh boy, more spiky hair lawyer man thing. <laughs> that sounds like it would be like the Phoenix Wright version of the flying one-eyed purple people eater. A criminal, a thief. She'd never forgive me. My marriage would be over. Knowing that, why did you become a thief in the first place? Because Desi spends money like it's water. There's no job in the world that could bring in enough money. Except being a thief. At least that's what I thought anyway. So he became masked to mask for Desiree, huh? Uh, know anything about this? 
this list. We found it in the office of the CEO, Mr. Bullard. Hey, this is a list of all the things Mask to Mask stole! And that's and that's the value of each item listed next to them. A hundred thousand dollars, a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Are you sure that's the value of the stolen items? Hmm, the numbers seem a little low to me. Even on the black market, the prices should be at least three times higher than that. I guess he knows about that stuff because he used to be a security guard. That's the emergency buzzer from the CEO's office. Did you just rip it off the wall? <laughs> so, you became flashy to impress your wife. Don't steal my job. <laughs> it's my job to impress your wife, Ron. Don't press it. It makes a terrible racket. <laughs> Sorry, I just love making a lot of noise. Uh, um, does this buzzer have something to do with this case? Well, at this point, I don't really know yet. Except we do. We broke the Cyclops of, uh... Larry, and it said that it was pressed that night. After all, there were no prints on it or anything else for that matter. But there was the buzzer record. The buzzer went off just once around the time that Bullard was killed! Ooh! Th that's scary! Do you know anything about that, Mr. Delight? Sorry, I'm afraid I don't. Why am I not surprised by how clueless he is anymore? <laughs> Obligatory fuck you, Larry. Hey! This is an article about my debut heist! Boy, that was a tough one. Before I knew it, they were hot on my trail. But Master Mask, he must have gotten away, right? It says the article that he disappeared. That's right, I got a sudden burst of inspiration. I hid my Master Mask costume in a pub nearby pl plastic bucket. And then I quickly changed into my security guard uniform. Pretty clever, huh? So, that is him in the background. And he... Because the one thing that was tripping me up was... He got fired a year ago, but Mask to Mask started six months ago. So, yeah, I guess he just had... Why would he just have his security guard uniform on? Hmm. <laughs> Why does Ron look like 8 and 25 at the same time? He just has that youthful look in his eye. Wow, awesome! Hey, hold the phone. The guard in this photo... Is this you, Mr. Delight? <laughs> That's right. Nice trick if I do say so myself. Nice and easy to figure out. Even Pearls could see through that one in a heartbeat. But as you might expect, Detective Atme found the disguise. He truly deserves the title of Ace Detective. Detective Atme found the Master Mask disguise? That's interesting. Yes, and I heard that he brought it home with him. So that's it. That's when Atme got his hands on this. So... Okay. Ron is Mask to Mask. But Atme claimed that he made up Mask to Mask. Alright, so this is chicken and the egg time. Who's the real Mask to Mask? Luke Atme claimed that he created Mask to Mask... But that's just it. Luke never said that he was Mask to Mask. He, he said that he created. My other security guard was Ron. No, he was like, he has a long nose. <laughs> My money's on the butler. It's always the butler. Nah, that was last game. <laughs> Shelly the Killer is the best butler. So yeah, it's... <laughs> Something weird is going on. Because it doesn't seem like Ron knows Luke aside from being an ace detective. This is weird. There's a lot of tangly bits and we're just going to get through it by going forward. Thanks to that, I got the chance to remake my costume. That must have been a really time consuming, huh? Yes, it, it took quite a while to complete. Anyway, a few days after that, I received the first of the blackmail letters. The first of them, so the blackmail letters, hmm. Actually, why does Ron look like a guy and a girl at the same time? He has that youthful vigor in his eyes. B blackmail letters? You got them started when? Tell me more, now! Hey, calm down. Don't get me so worked up. Ooh. A funky little beat up in here. This blackmail letter, is that the first one you got? No, of course not. But this is the first one that ever called me out to a specific location. 
So, did you start receiving blackmail letters after this incident? Yes, just a few days after the Tear of Imidon heist. That first letter, it said, I know you did it. So someone found out about your true identity just like that? Uh, it's not easy being a master thief, you know. I've got the proof that it was you, so give up, it went on to say. So in the end, I had to give up the treasure. I went through all the trouble to steal. Is that right? Hey, hang on a second. What do you mean, give it up? Oh, don't worry. After I put up the jewel in a safe deposit box, the letter specified, someone sent me $10,000. No one said anything about me being worried, you know. After that, I started getting the plans in the mail. P plans? So maybe Luke at me did. Hmm. Did you know that when my Mia died, it was the year 2025? I know that it the timeline was one. No, I thought it was earlier than that because I could have sworn that there was like a mild like celebratory thing of like ah, it is this day of Ace Attorney, but in real life. But I could be wrong. But I do know that it was like set in the far quote unquote far future compared to when it was made. But quickly back to my thoughts. So maybe Luke at me did create his so it's possible that Luke at me maybe worked with the CEO guy to blackmail Ron and then eventually so yeah he was the so mask to mask was created by Ron but then Luke at me took over to bolster his own like diddly d. Hmm, it's all very interesting. Let's get on with it. It's getting more twisty by the minute. What are these plans you're talking about? They were instructions on how to steal a crown or painting or some other rare treasure. <laughs> Should I start a counter of all the times I show up and there's no Edgeworth Redeem? Day 55 of, or more like stream 55 of their no Edgeworth Redeem. I keep forgetting. They showed up security blinds. They showed security blind spots, escape routes, and even suggested training methods. So you mean that the one who planned the heist wasn't you? No, it wasn't. I only planned the very first one. After that, I received plans for some from some very kind person. Incredibly detailed plans. It sounds like Mr. Delight is thankful to the person that was blackmailing them. He is a poor, poor man. So Ron Delight was masked to mask after all? But someone else is behind the thefts. Someone who planned them all in detail. All I had to do was deposit the treasures I stole into the safe deposit box. And then I just waited for the cash to come in the mail. But you try not to look so gleeful about it. So you went after the sacred urn because of one of those plans too? Well, you see, truth is I've never seen the urn. All, all I did was follow the instructions and steal what I was told to steal. Mr. Delight, is everything you just told me the truth? Yes, but, but please don't tell Desi, okay? Ron's testimony added to the court record. <laughs> Ron out here playing GTA. Hmm. Ron, before we go, there's one more thing I want to ask you. Yes, but please don't hurt me. Mr. Kane Bullard, do you swear that it wasn't you who killed him? Yes, of course! I could never... I, I'm not lying! All I did was hide his body in the safe. But then I was afraid they'd discover what I did. So I turned myself in yesterday. Under the pretense of being a thief. Weird. Um, why? Well, if the judge had ruled that I was guilty of robbery, then I'd have an alibi, right? Hmm, I guess so. You're really clever, Mr. Delight. I guess I have no choice but to take Mr. Delight at his word. And besides, look at that face. Ron looks too cute to do anything devious, even though he did steal the Jewel of Imanon or whatever it was. Mystic Maya! Hey! Pearly! I'm back! Hey, Pearl, so what have you been up to this whole time? The sacred urn, Mr. Nick. I took it back to Kirang Village to have it examined. And, and, what did you find out? Well, there's no need to worry. They said it's the real urn. 
Whew! That's a relief. I was really worried. But there's one small problem. Problem? Um, these cute little pink splotches? They said that it's paint and they were put on the urn recently. Why are we talking about the pink splotches again? What's the big deal? What's the big deal? We've got to find out how they got there. That's the big deal. Yes, Mr. Nick, we've got to find out how they got there. Okay, okay. We'll go find out how they got there. P please don't forget about me. Poor guy. Well, I guess now we have the information we need to break Andrew's Cyclops. Presumably. I will believe. Oh, Pearl. How nice to see you. Uh, hello there. I haven't seen you around lately. What have you been up to? Well, actually, I was having the, the serine examined. Oh, I see. Phoenix getting told what to do by a little child. Hey, that child has hands. Pearl will kill Phoenix one day. And then he'll rise from the ashes. Maybe if we take another good look at this urn. We can figure out what the mystery of what actually happened here. Nick, let's look around one more time. I, I really like this theme. This box. There's something about it that's bothering me. That's the box the Sacred Urn was in. It looks like there's some pink paint on it, too. And, a definite, and it's definitely the same color as the stuff on the urn. I think I know how the paint got onto it now. All right, let's investigate again, Nick. A wooden box that had a sacred urn in it has pink... <laughs> and then over here is paint. It looks to me like it's been dry for several days. There's something suspicious about this paint mark. The bottom left part of the shape oddly and it's shockingly pink. Mr. Nick, could it be that this odd shape is... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is it. Ah, that's the box the sacred urn was in. If you look here, there's a little bit of paint on the box as well. Wow, you're right! Look, it matches! What is it, Mr. Nick? This is all turning out exactly as I thought it would. I love how Adrian looks more edgy by wearing a black turtleneck, but she's actually happier. It could be that she's working as a, as a high-ranking person at Lordly Taylor. Perhaps. I think it's all starting to become clear. We're that much closer to solving the mystery of what happened to the urn. We can't even look at the appropriately colored diddly D. But I think we have all the information we need to break your cyclox. Well, let's try. Tickle it! I should smack you! Miss Andrews, do you know anything about the sacred urn? D do I know anything? I'm in charge of the entire treasure exhibit. The urn that was submitted before the court today. It's obviously not the same urn as before. Well, that's... That's, um, true. Maybe it isn't the same. It could be. It could be a fake. A fake? You're the one who said it wasn't the same, so that's the most obvious explanation. Do you have any evidence the urn was submitted at the trial was genuine? Well, we do have the urn now, don't we? It is genuine. Get smacked. Sorry to break it to you, but the urn is ge the genuine article. Pearls went back to Curing Village and had it examined. Is that right? That's nice, but I don't see how. What she did discover was that the urn had been broken again. D did you say again? Yes, it was broken once a year ago. And now it looks like the same thing has happened. And quite recently, too. <laughs> don't break the poor girl's cyclox, she just got rid of her sadness. Well, to be fair, breaking... <laughs> Did you even have Cyclox last time? But bringing out the dark evil secrets of the past helped her once before, and we'll do it again. But recently? Are you saying that this urn was broken recently? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Why do you think it was broken recently? How do you know? Hmm... Do I present this now? Yeah. This poster. It was made recently, right? 
poster? Ah, the poster for the exhibit! At the time when this photo was taken, the urn said, I am on it. But now, for some mysterious reason, it says, Ami. When the urn was fixed, the letters were transposed. Ah! I am? What does that even mean? I don't know anything about that. I wasn't even there when the photo for this poster was taken. That was a mistake. Now, tell the truth. Uh, wait! Four? I even if the urn was broken, I had nothing to do with it. Huh? Yes, that's it. It must have been one of the people at the photo shoot. They probably dropped it. I'm sure that's what happened. Hmm, it looks like she's not going to give up the last Cyclops so easily. Do you have any proof that the urn was broken here at Lordly Taylor? Could it be the box? Well, Miss Andrews, um, what is this supposed to mean? This urn has some pretty little pink paint splotches on it. Hmm. And there's some on the box of the urn was stored in, too. No matter how you look at it, the paint seems to be exactly the same, wouldn't you say? So, what does that prove? That the urn was dropped along with the box. That's when they both got paint on them. Are you with me so far? Yes. The rest of the story is obvious. This box was dropped right here in the Lordly Taylor's basement warehouse. If I can prove that, it means that the urn was broken here, too. So can you prove that? Can you prove that the box was dropped here in the basement warehouse? Get splatooned. Ah! <laughs> uh, I think you already know where I'm going with this, don't you? Yes, more or less. There's pink paint splattered on the floor and walls of this basement warehouse. But there's an odd-shaped imprint into the part of the paint stain, am I right? Yes. If you put this box into the impression in the paint, you can see that it fits perfectly. Which means this box was dropped right here, over there. And that is when the urn was broken. Your name does you justice, Mr. Wright. Unlock successful. I'm so sorry. I was the one, the one who broke the urn. Why does this make me feel like some sort of evil school teacher? I'm a terrible person. Not only did I break it, but I tried to hide what I did. I mean, you did fix it, and it already had cracks in it to begin with. To, beyond the paint splotches, those are the only real things that were, are an issue. Otherwise, you kind of made it better. How nobody realized that it said, I am, for this entire year, I don't know. Well, that's not so hard to understand. Is it, Pearly? N no, not at all. I know just how she feels. It happened about two weeks ago. Just after the post... No. Just after the poster photo was taken on the same day the urn arrived here. I thought I'd put it away down here for safekeeping. I was carrying it in the box. That is oddly a hilarious look. When I tripped on a paint can and lost my balance. <laughs> Ace interrogator. I am all of me. That's what the urn means. I can't believe they cremated Shadow the Hedgehog. The box I was carrying crashed to the ground. I heard a terrible noise and thought my heart was going to stop. Fearing the worst, I opened the lid of the box and that's when it happened. The broken pieces of the urn fell out of the box and landed right in the paint. I, I, I was in shock. And I let out a huge scream. Hmm. I can totally see how that could have happened. Yeah, as clumsy as she is, I'm sure my... <laughs> sure my understands. Well, I knew it was the mo most important treasure in all of Curing Village. So I tried as hard as I could to fix it. Fortunately, the shards were pretty big. And that's when the I Am got changed to Ami. I didn't know how it was originally written, but any sane person fixing it would have assumed it said Ami. Any sane person? Really? Adrian, are you sure you didn't break when you screamed? <laughs> she said she wasn't very good at spelling. Anyway, I put the urn into the storeroom and no one had seen it since then. Sacred urn updated! I'm going to assume that this is going to be important to the case somehow. But there's something I don't get. 
When we first came here, I didn't see any paint stains. Well, that's because it was so ugly and embarrassing. I used the golden statue to cover it. The Ami face statue. Aha! <laughs> School's important, kids. Stay in school when you're in the mountains, learning to be a spirit medium. The first time that we came down here, it was the night the sacred urn was stolen. But Mr. Nick, there was no paint marks on the wall or floor of the warehouse when we were here. <laughs> it helps you maintain continuity. School does. Well, there's a good reason for that. On the day of the crime around noon, that golden statue just happened to arrive from the mountain training hall. And? I realized that the statue would be the perfect size for covering up the paint stains. That's why I put it where you first saw it. I see. Now it makes perfect sense. Um, but there's still one thing I found strange. What is it, Pearl? The day after the urn was stolen, we came here again. And at that time, the statue had been moved and the paint was clearly visible. She's right about that. Well, Miss Andrews? Huh? Well, I, uh, I don't know anything about that. I placed it there to cover the paint, so why would I move it again? Could it... Could it be that... Ba, ba, ba. Could it be that Luke at me moved it because he was looking for the brooch? That's the only thing I can think of. Well, then who was it? Who would have done it and why? On the day before the theft, the statue was definitely closer to the door. And then the next day, it was moved. But why? Hmm. There is something odd, like... Hmm. There's two points. Point number one, how did the brooch get lost? Because... Luke at me said that he, initially the brooch went missing because he got into a fight with Mask to Mask. Now that we know that he was wearing Mask to Mask, the Mask to Mask costume from the first heist, then we don't know how the brooch got lost then. It c hmm. Because really, he could have taken out the urn at any time if we are going under the assumption that he could have modified the software on the computer to tell the camera what time it was. So he could have stolen it at any time and make it say, oh, it was one o'clock. But then... But then to maintain his, like, bibbidi ba. His alibi of being there looking at the camera system before being smacked upside the head. Maybe that's when the statue was moved. He kind of climbed up it a bit to... Well, it depends how big the statue is. It looks pretty damn big. It looks pretty big. But... It absolutely stumped me on why the statue was moved. Yeah, because... My most likely theory is Luke did it either when he was looking for the brooch or when he was grabbing the sword to break it a bit to claim that he was whapped upside the head with it. Can we get some Phoenix X Mayan here? I'm sure Pearl will provide at some point. Probably by slapping Phoenix for talking to another woman. But yeah, hmm. Don't know why it would be moved. Hmm. I'm sure we'll figure it out eventually. It looks like there's some connection between the sacred urn and the murder case. But why? Why do you think so, Nick? Because that night, the real thief Ron Delight was at KB Security. So then why did another mask to mask show up here? A lot of different things are pointing to one undeniable fact. One undeniable fact? The murder trial is starting tomorrow, but... It looks like that thief is going to be making another appearance. So yeah, my thoughts are... 
because purely because of that spoilerific like silhouette flash when Ron was giving his account on things, my current theory is that Luke at me for whatever reason had it out for the the this KB security head, Kang Bollard. So he framed Ron for it because he knew Ron was mask to mask. It's also entirely possible that Kang Bullard was in on the blackmail of Mask to Mask. And then for whatever reason, Luke at me then decided I'm going to kill you. So, to cover... But that still doesn't explain... Because if we go off this line of thought, Luke at me was expecting Ron to get there. So he hit Ron upside the head and fled... But who pressed... <gasps> ah, I get it. I get it now. I get it. I wonder if Look At Me is going to be in the murderer too. I actually don't know. My theory is that... Yes, Look At Me had it out for the KB security head, King Bullard. So, he used the blackmail template to blur Ron to the murder scene and he with his gloved hand pressed the buzzer but and the entire plan was to have the security team rush in and find the ex-security chief there having supposedly murdered Kane Bullard and then Luke Atme would have the alibi of staking out the the mask to mask case. So he set up the whole thing, claimed that he got hit upside the head and uh, modified the computer software because he admitted that while he had no access to the camera or the sensors, he made the software on the computer that was connected to the camera. And he modified that software so that it made it look like it was one o'clock around-ish that Mask to Mask stole the urn when in actuality it was earlier or later so he could have been at the KB security office to kill the Kane Bullard and frame Ron. Boobity boo. Theory established. And all because the game decided that it was going to go, we're going to show you <laughs> look at me silhouette. I wish everyone wore leather. According to this game, fingerprints are a lot more clear on leather. Because <laughs> wasn't that... That was on a few things. Or was it just Rise from the Ashes? Though there was another time where fingerprints showed up. Was it a leather jacket that in the tutorial case for this game? I forget. Hey, Nick! What is it this time? You won't believe how many people are here for the trial! Well, it is a murder case. What are you talking about? They're here for the trial next door! Next door? Why don't you know this, Nick? Uh, they're having Detective Atme's trial today! Detective Atme? They say they're going to try him as Mask to Mask. Already? That was fast. Boy, I'd love to see Mask to Mask's trial. I know. By the way, where's Pearls? Oh, she went back home. She said she can't neglect her training anymore. I... Oh, who's saying it? Is it Ron? I know you don't like me. Pearls hasn't really gotten into her training lately, huh? Yeah, ever since that incident last year. Please! Don't ignore me! Oh, Mr. Delight! Good morning. No one likes me. No one would notice me even if I killed someone. Come on, don't be silly. But wait a sec. You don't mean you're the murderer? N no, no! I'm just a poor thief! No, wait, that's not right. A thief can't really be poor. I mean, you can. You are, you are being... <laughs> oh, this man is insane. Now let's see, according to Mr. Delight, from his second crime on, he was following a bunch of set plans. Plans that someone had been sending to him to help him commit the heists. And I believe that that was Luke at me as well. Luke at me worked with KB Security to make it easy... Because 
presumably, in my mind, Luke at me teamed up with Kane Bullard. And that way, any building that, like, Kane Security worked at, Detective at me would have, like, access to where their security cameras were, were and be able to guide Ron through the thing with the, the heist plans. This way, he would not only be able to blackmail Ron for the treasures, but also be able to be a magnificent detective going after the mysterious Mask to Mask. But then, for whatever reason, he then wanted to kill Kane Bullard, and so he used the extra Mask to Mask costume he had, and the software, to give himself an alibi, and frame Ron for it. My therapy is that Luke... Oh, uh, you mean theory, is that Luke sent Ron those plans to make Luke rich. Nah, I don't think Luke cared too much about the riches. He's far too self-absorbed. While the riches were definitely a bonus, he mostly wanted the fame and fortune of being known as a great detective. Do you really think there's a connection between the thief and the murder, Nick? It's possible, but today's trial is a race against the clock. Huh? How come? Let's just take our time like always. I'm afraid that's not an option. Because we need to bring uh, Luke in at some point, I presume. We bust into the second courtroom. We need your guilty party! Yes, it was a leather jacket when you, used, uh, you, when you were defending Nick. Aha, my memory isn't terrible. Court is now in session for the trial of Ron Delight. The defense is ready, Your Honor. You're ready? Pre pre preparation is the last refuge of the weak. What? What do you even mean? Okay, settle down, everyone. Let's begin with your opening statement, Mr. Godot. If only we got- we landed on a, like, sprite of Godot drinking some coffee. Remember to stay hydrated. Does coffee even hydrate you? It has caffeine, so I don't know. Uh, he's got the judge in the palm of his hand. Yet again. Ron Delight is simply too young to be sent to war. And that's all. I'm afraid I have no idea what that means, Mr. Godot. Ha. Huh. Then you need to get out more, Your Honor. Life is war, but that's what exactly why you must be more precise in your wording. And that's all my statement means. You understand now, right? Yes, well then, let me briefly summarize the details of this case. Wow, the judge is taking charge like he knows what's going on for a change. The victim is Kane Bullard, CEO of KB Security. His body was found in a safe at approximately 9 a.m. on the morning of the 13th. However, the time of death was estimated as 1 a.m. the previous day. And that's when our lost little kitten dropped the ball. <laughs> that little lost kitten is, of course, the defendant. Well, that's an attractive face on Bullock. That's what I said. It's just not a flattering look. Very well then, Mr. Godot. Please call your first witness. I never drink more than 17 cups of coffee during any given trial. You've only had one trial, Mr. Godot. <laughs> that man's dead. Leave him alone. <laughs> but the first one is always the best. Um, Mr. Godot, your witness. Okay, then. Let's hear what the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight, has to say for himself. The defendant? Well, Mr. Wright, does the defense have any objections? It may be a bit of a disadvantage having the defendant testify, but... Godot, you need to stop. Your bladder can't take much more coffee. Well, maybe he's an X-Man. That means he has a super bladder. I remember when Mia was defending me. She allowed me to testify so she could do the cross-examination. She put a lot of trust in me back then. We have no objections, Your Honor. The defense will allow Mr. Delight to testify. Huh. You've got guts, Trite. All right, then, Mr. Ron Delight. Please take the stand. You did it, didn't you? Yes. What? Uh... No, 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 that's not true! Hmm. 
For a moment there, I thought we'd set the record for the shortest trial ever. Ah, uh, well, Mr. Delight already looks plenty guilty of that face he's making. And once he opens his big mouth, he'll probably be the last nail in his own coffin. Ha! Huh. Very well. Now then, can you tell me something? If you didn't kill Bollard, why did you go to KB Security? W well I... That's kind of hard to say. Boy, I wish I could go home. Now then, let's hear some testimony about what happened. Why did he just say yes like that without a skip of a beat? Weird little man. That evening, around 1 a.m., I went to see Mr. Bullard in his office at KB Security. The blackmail letter I got, it ordered me to go there. I had been working for KB Security until a year ago, so I knew where his office was. Well, that was fast. 1 a.m., the exact time of the murder took place. The weak get washed away by the tides of fate. The strong drink it up. So you're a cannibal? Ha! Huh. It's bitter today, too. Just like my destiny. You never know that from the way he's chugging it down. Mr. Wright, do a cross-examination, if you please. <laughs> Bitter is a fake flavor. I've never had coffee, so I don't know. 1 a.m., huh? You're absolutely sure about that. Yes, and that's what my watch said when I was entering the CEO's office. Uh, no, actually, I I'm not really sure. My watch was slow, and my internal clock was also a bit... 1 a.m. That's the exact time the victim, Mr. Bullard, was murdered, correct? Who actually likes something that's entirely bitter? Uh, people with odd taste buds. They just have a preference. I bet Godot sees the world different. Why else does he wear that visor? Because he doesn't want to murder people with his x-ray vision. It turns people into x-rays. It's like X's on their eyes because they got rayed to death. It's too late for a coffee date, that's for sure. The blackmail letter I got, it ordered me to go there. It ordered you there? It was the first time I'd gotten a blackmail letter that ordered me to go somewhere. Does that mean you've gotten other blackmail letters then? Oh, of course. They'd say things like, steal this or take that. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you save those for later, Mr. Delight? Please don't say any more. Now, what should I do? Hmm... I can always save, just in case. And plus, hmm, don't know. I don't believe we'll need too much pain and misery. Let's see. Uh, do we want to press harder? Uh, but Ron is kind of fragile, so if we do press harder, he'll get annihilated. Hmm. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, it's press. It's not going to be in the end of the world. So what did the blackmail letter in question say? It said to bring $50,000. Money, eh? A perfect motive for committing murder. <laughs> Facts don't care about his feelings. But we do. Oh, but wait, wait! I never intended to pay that money anyway. Oh, is that right? After all, he had nothing to hold over my head. I had nothing to be afraid of. Hmm, an important point indeed. Witness, let's have that added to your testimony. Yes, sir. Ha. Huh. A muddy mud skipper in outer space has better chance of surviving than I do. Phoenix, you have suffered worse, like, bad situations. Well, let's press. Just what were you being blackmailed about anyway? The blackmail letter said if you don't want your identity revealed, correct? I'm not sh I'm sure it was referring to the whole mask to mask thing. But I wasn't worried. Mr. Bullard didn't have anything on me. He didn't? Anyway, I don't care what anyone says about me. Just as long as Desi believes in me. That's why Miss Delight didn't believe he was mask to mask. That's why I knew they were just hollow threats. Hmm. A funny moment happens if you try to press the wrong statement in logic chess. Is if you press on the wrong statement, your time runs out instantly. Ah, for the... Ace Attorney Investigations. That seems scary. I've been working for KB Security until a year ago. 
You used to be a security chief for KB Security, right? Yes, that's right. A security chief? You? And yet, a year ago, you were fired. Without notice. Revenge for an old grudge? A perfect motive for murder, wouldn't you say? I'd ask what statement that is, but that's probably a spoiler. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to, like, this is the instant death failure zone. Hmm. Hmm, another multi-choice. It's probable that nothing bad would happen, but let's see. Life after being fired. That would probably lead him into admitting that he turned to crime, and we don't want that. Why he was fired seems like the most obvious one. Don't say anything. I think we need to say why he was... We'll ask why he was fired. Let's see. Mr. Delight, please tell us why you were fired from your job. Well... The world is filled with those who have said, I wish I'd never asked that. <laughs> who even... Okay, then I... Defendant, please answer the question. I... Well... I needed money. You needed money? Um, well, you see, Desi loves to spend it. It's kind of her hobby. Not exactly the best hobby in the world, huh, Nick? My salary wasn't nearly enough, so I stole data from the company. Come again? So either way. <laughs> KB Security has a lot of security info on all sorts of companies. And since I was a security team chief... You stole some data and sold it. Mr. Bullard found out, and I was fired immediately. What? I wish I'd never asked that. So, uh, wait, is so Ron is Desi's sugar daddy? In an odd situation in which she actually does love and care about him, she broke into Luke Atme's detective agency and brought in the, <laughs> the urn, so... It just so happens that she probably overestimates his salary. I was somehow able to keep it secret and made it seem like I'd quit on my own. What is it, Nick? You don't look so good. Someone who brings harm to that company is fired as punishment. You do well to remember that. He sure told you. So you admit that you stole data from your company, is that correct? Yes, I'm sorry. This is a very important fact. Please add it to your testimony. Man, this whole thing just took a big turn for the worst, crashed, and blew up. It's gonna take the jaws of life to rip this case from the clutches of disaster. And while you're in the clutches of disaster, remember to stay hydrated. But this is a very silly little man. Hmm, but Desi doesn't know about that. Hmm. Um, let's press and see. Why would you do something like that? Well, for Desi's hobby, what else? Wasting money, huh? It's not a waste! So Miss Delight doesn't know that her husband was fired, does she? So it would seem. I'm not sure what to think about couples who keep secrets like that from each other. I can't believe it. This case has gotten even Maya to think seriously about couples. Please try to stay focused, Mr. Wright. There wasn't much of to his testimony, was there? Sounds like he's avoiding something. At least, that's what it sounds like to me. Oh, I've got a bad feeling about this. We better be careful. But if we don't find a way to make him spill the beans, we'll never get closer to the truth. Yeah. Hmm. To go there. Threat didn't scare me. Then why did he go at all? But oh, wait. You fire me soon. Desi doesn't know about that. The judge's beard. I wish someone would wear it in real life. I'm sure there has to be somebody with a similar beard. Hmm. It's fired for selling company secrets. Desi doesn't know. Then could it be that this is a lie? The blackmail threat didn't scare me, and he thinks the blackmail came from the KB security head. But it should scare him because he doesn't want Desiree to know that he doesn't have the job anymore. And plus she hates criminals and cowards, which is kind of what Ron Delight is. 
Yeah, let's start there. That's actually right. Okay. Mr. Delight, what you said just now doesn't match what you told me yesterday. Huh? What doesn't? I think you must have been scared, very scared, of having a certain person find out your secret. Uh, a certain person. Can you read the blackmail letter? I think we can. But uh, it just says, like, I know who, you, like, your identity and what you did. Let's see, yeah. If you don't want your true identity revealed to the world, come to KB Security at 1 a.m. If you don't tell the red diamond... Uh, I'll take the that red diamond you received the other day instead. I completely forgot about that second part. I'll take that red diamond you received. Wait! 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 Look at me. He has a red diamond on his finger. Luke at me has a red diamond on his ring that I think he got as reward. So the blackmail letter was sent actually to Luke, but Luke knew about Ron being masked to mask, so he decided to kill two birds with one stone. And he sent in the real mask to mask to be framed for the murder of Bullard while he put up his own alibi stealing the urn and being masked to mask. Eh. Miss Desiree Delight, the defendant's wife. Ah, but I... Listen to me! My Desi, she's... Looks like if I just sit back and relax, the fun will end before it truly begins. Ah, Godot. Yes, we know. It was all your wife's fault. What do you mean? Mr. Delight stole company data to pay for his wife's spending habit for which he was fired. Unable to face his own wife, someone used his dirty little secret to blackmail him. And that is how the murder came about. Oh, hmm. No, everything is falling neatly into place for him. D -d Don't talk about my Desi like that, or you'll be sorry! Well, it seems that we've learned a great deal of things here so far. What do you think, Nick? I don't think it was possible to get so thoroughly whipped in just 20 minutes. Clearly there was sufficient motive for murder. He stole data for his wife, and he killed to protect his secret. A family man who cared just a little too much. The motive is clear. Let's move on. Uh, what happened at the crime scene at one in the morning, Mr. Delight? Come now, tell us. We're all ears. When I entered the office, there was a suspicious shadow there. L look at me, jump scare! Suddenly, I was hit on the forehead. After that, I remember being a bit dazed. If I hadn't been wearing that, I would have been killed. When I came to, Mr. Bullard was lying there, dead. I see. Suddenly hit on the forehead, huh? I believe the detective from yesterday provided similar testimony. He said that mask to mask struck him on the head from behind. Of course, since Atme turned out to be the culprit himself, that was all a lie. Ha. Huh. No one's going to believe a pathetic lie like that. What are you saying? I really was attacked! I can see why Ron married Desi. They're both really delusional. Not really Desi. She at least admitted that Ron was delusional. We'll find out what you have... If what you say is true or not during the cross-examination. Got that, Mr. Trite? Don't go easy just because he's your client. If I see any sign that you are, I'll treat you another cup of my special blend. You don't need to worry about that, Mr. Godot. I have faith in Ron. I know he didn't do it. Alright, we're gonna jump on everything and see... Who was this suspicious shadow? If there were thousands of me, and if even one knew, I tell you, trust me. He's dodging all of our questions. It's not helping us with this case. Okay, then how was the victim, Mr. Bullard, at the time? What do you mean by, how was he? Was he already dead? Was he still alive? Maybe he was the one who hit you in the first place. 
that's a good question. What do you think, Mr. Wright? F forget it. <laughs> Suddenly I was hit on the forehead. After that, I remember being a bit dazed. By the way, you haven't seen the picture I was talking about yesterday. Just keep looking. Definitely will. Your forehead. Yes, I was hit on the forehead as soon as I entered the room. It was a, an amazingly fast and powerful attack. Do you remember anything about who hit you? Well, like I said, it was fast and powerful, so I think I was a little dazed for a while. I don't think Mr. Delight even grasped what you were asking. Yeah, I'd like to show him a fast and powerful attack myself. Maybe that would be... Maybe that would knock some sense back into him. If I haven't... If I hadn't been wearing that, I would have been killed. Hmm. Does that mean that maybe... Did Luke Atney bring the Shishishito to the... the thing? No. Could it? No. If he was hit in the forehead, he would have a knot there, but he said he was wearing something. That, could you please clarify what you're referring to? Why, my Mask to Mask costume, of course. W wait just a moment! Mask to Mask? Uh-huh, oh, did I forget to mention it before? Just to be on the safe side, I dressed as Mask to Mask. And then I descended upon the office of the CEO of Se KB Security. What? Nick, did you know about this? You never told me this. I don't recall him ever mentioning it to me either, but it does explain why he was wearing the costume. Even I didn't know that. It seems our little friend really loves to keep secrets. <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just never had a chance to mention it up until now. Wait, that's not right. Um, you know how sometimes things just slip your mind? Ha, huh. my sixth cup of coffee is starting up, uh, staring up at me coldly. At any rate, we can't ignore this new piece of information. Witness, please correct your testimony. I'd have been killed if I had been wearing my Master Mask costume. Why were you dressed up as Master Mask? Why, because I'm Master Mask, of course. What are you talking about? Master Mask trial has been held next door. Ah, uh, yes, I guess so. Anyway, at that time, I thought I was being blackmailed over the black the Master Mask is issue. So I thought I should go as him, just to be safe. Oh boy. Let me tell you, it's a real pain to move around with that cape. That's why it took a lot longer than I'd expected. Took a lot longer? What is he talking about? Hmm. Do we press harder? I think maybe we could. Hmm. Either Godot is tired every five minutes, or he really loves coffee. Either way, he drinks a lot of this stuff. He could just be insane. Hmm. Let's press harder and see what he has to say. Um, what do you mean by took a lot longer? Oh, opening the safe, of course. My cape got caught on the do safe door, you see. This all happened when I was hiding Mr. Bullet's body. W what was that? Back up a second! Yes? You were the one that hid the body in the safe? Um, well, yeah. Inconceivable! Why? Just why? What reason could you have? What were you thinking? Question. When does someone toss their dirty shorts in the washing machine? Uh, what? The answer's simple. When they take them off. As usual, I have no idea what you're trying to say. Do you mean that Mr. Delight hit the body because he's the murderer? Ha! Huh. So you're not as stupid as you look. His metaphor this time was really obscure. Mr. Wright, you don't mean that you knew about this whole safe business, do you? Uh, well, yes. Why am I the only one not in the loop here? Witness, make sure you add this to the testimony. Yes, sir. Oh, looks like a storm front is moving in over the fair weather judge. I panicked and hid the body in the safe. It took about ten minutes. Why did you hide the body in the safe anyway? 
Well, because it wouldn't fit in a drawer. Uh, that's not exactly what I meant. When I saw that corpse, I kind of lost it. I thought, if they find his corpse, they'll think I did it. Ha. Huh. I think you had a simpler reason than that. It's because you killed him. That's why you spent ten minutes hiding the body. Hmm, that certainly makes more sense. Uh, hold on. Ten minutes. What is it, Nick? I just have thought. Under those circumstances, when you normally try to hide the body and spend ten whole minutes to do it, under those circumstances? What circumstances? Oh! Hey, Nick! If you think his behavior was so strange, why don't you present some evidence that would show just what those circumstances were? That's it. I'll take a look at the court record and present some evidence. We heard this from Mr. Delight yesterday, didn't we? There's not much in this testimony either. I bet you he's still hiding something. I wouldn't be surprised. We'll just have to draw it out of him. I just hope he doesn't make things any more complicated. Hmm. So, specifically about took ten minutes. Hmm. Let's look at the evidence. Because didn't it have something about the diddly -dee? Well, first there's, like, yeah, his second heist, but... Yeah, the buzzer was set off at 102. But there's no fingerprints on it. Again, because I think Luke at me you had his gloves on at the time. Died at 1 a.m. On the dot. I'm going to say... I feel like the buzzer record should suffice. But I'm gonna save just in case the game is mean. Well, I'm gonna say buzzer record. Objection. Your Honor, could you please take a look at this record? And what might this be? The record for the emergency buzzer that connects the CEO's office to security. Both work, actually. That's what I thought, but I was paranoid. And my brain was just like, just in case they overlooked this, I'm going to save. So if the game goes, ha ha, you knew what you was right, but you failed my obscureness. I was going to save scum because it's like, how dare you game? I did it right and you still hurt me. That was my methodology. If the button in the office is pressed, the security team is supposed to come running. And according to this record, the buzzer was pushed once at 1.02 a.m. What? If Mr. Ron Delight truly was the murderer... He would have ran as soon as that buzzer sounded. After all, a security guard would have been heading his way. Ha! Huh. Let's remember who we're dealing with here. He probably had no idea there was security personnel in the building. He was the, the... The chief security person. That's your entire deal. He worked at the company as chief security officer. Stole info due to his capabilities of that position. Was fired. That's your entire... That's your entire standing, Godot! Up until one year ago, my client was working as a chief of security. There's no way he wouldn't have known about them. But as soon as it tur as it turns out, the guard never came. That was nothing more than a coincidence. The fact that the guard was a pathetic loser who had just gotten punched in the face by his ex's new boyfriend and wasn't anywhere in the vicinity was not something Mr. Delight could have known. <sighs> Again, remember who we're dealing with here. It's a sure bet that Mr. Delight didn't even notice the buzzer going off. This buzzer is extremely loud. There's no way he could have ignored something like that. If he had been conscious, that is. Conscience? What do you mean by that? Uh. Fine. Let's hear your theory. Recall the defendant's testimony. The moment he entered the victim's office, someone attacked him. Mr. Delight said he felt dazed. I want to just quickly look. What is his, like, diddly be? Yeah, that's just about a second heist onward. Okay, good. Just wanted to make sure I had knew about it specifically. I'm willing to wager that he was knocked unconscious for at least a few minutes. Unconscious? So he fainted? That's why Mr. Delight didn't know that the buzzer had sounded. And that's why he thought he had time to hide the body. So what are you trying to say? Mr. Delight was knocked out and the buzzer went off soon afterwards. Now, unless my client was able to hit the buzzer while he was unconscious, 
it, it can only mean that there was another person in that room. That's right. Whoever it was, they knocked out Ron Delight and then pressed the buzzer. Order in the court. Mr. Wright, this, this is... Th this is preposterous. It was this kid. Ron Delight is the one who killed Kane Bullard. Then who pressed the buzzer? Uh, it was... The victim, of course. He pressed the buzzer when the defendant attacked him. He didn't die right away. He must have held down long enough to push that button. But it said that he died at 1, not 102. So Kane Bullard sounded the buzzer himself. What is your opinion on this, Mr. Wright? I need to prove that the real criminal was there at the scene. Can I prove that it wasn't Kane Bullard? Considering, again, that the autopsy report says that he died at 1, specifically, I'm not around. Because there was another, like, one that said around, like, uh, over here. Bop, bop, bop. Around 1 a.m., the camera went off when specifically it was 5 8. Oh, 5 8. Before 1. I'm going to say I can prove it. The defense's opinion is this, Your Honor. The piece of evidence that proves that it wasn't the victim who sounded the buzzer. Wait, it could also be the buzzer itself, because there's no fingerprints on it. Which one do I do now? Because it said that he died at one. But I think I think the fingerprint one is more important. You make a good point, but I don't think the game's going to oblige. Still, I'm going to do it. I believe this is the piece of incon incontrovertible evidence you were looking for. The, the emergency buzzer? Is there some kind of clue on it? Absolutely not. Hey, come on now. At least give some thought to what you say before opening your mouth. The fact that there's absolutely no clues is itself the clue. Now I'm the one who's clueless. This button has no fingerprints on it. If Mr. Bullard had really pressed it himself, naturally he would have left his fingerprint behind. The time of death on an autopsy report is usually not 100% certain. That's why I was thinking that specifically it's saying died at 1 a.m. Especially when this says around 1 a.m. It might have obliged, but I don't know. Oh, spit take time! Ron Delight obviously wiped them off! Why would he? A guard could have come in at, in at any moment. He touched that button. I know he did! The defendant, Mr. Delight, was dressed as Mask to Mask. And Mask to Mask always wears gloves! What reason could he possibly have had to wipe the button free of fingerprints? Order! 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 <sighs> it would seem... I've been forced to eat crow. I wonder what blend number crow-flavored coffee is. However, if the real killer was there at the scene, why would that person press the emergency buzzer? Shouldn't they have run away without putting themselves in extra danger? I have my theory. Wish I could say it through Phoenix. What's with this awkward silence all of a sudden? Ha! Huh. It looks like you're fresh out of parlor tricks. They're on to you, Nick. Just give me a moment to collect my thoughts. The real culprit killed Mr. Bullard at one, around 1 a.m. And Mr. Delight just happened to waltz in when the murder was taking place, right? The killer clobbered Mr. Delight and then sounded the buzzer. Even though security was supposed to respond right away if the buzzer was pressed. Security was supposed to respond. Hmm. Time's up, Mr. Wright. Let's hear what you have to say. Very well, then. I hope that the game allows me to say that Mr. Delight was being set up. Oh, ho. You've got some guts. I like that in an opponent. Why did the real killer sound the emergency buzzer? To sound, call the security guard. Once again, it's not Phoenix's job to prove who really did it. He only has to prove his uh, client is innocent. But I think this one's more lenient because they're trying to argue why would somebody, the quote-unquote real killer, 
kill Bullard, knock out D Delight, and sound the alarm. They're trying to set up, like, why things were happening. Because we're still on the trying to prove that there was somebody else in that room. That somebody else killed Bullard and then knocked out Ron. That's basically what they're trying to argue against right now. It's not really, you need to prove who did it. They're trying to be like, like going down the list to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Ron didn't do it through these questions. The killer knew that if they pressed that button, a guard would come running. And that was exactly what they wanted. Do you mean to say the killer called the guard on purpose? Yes. Although, as it turned out, he never showed up. Because he was getting his clock cleaned at the time. Ha. Huh. What a touching story. You're saying the killer had a change of heart and called the guard to turn himself in? No, I'm not. When that buzzer sounded, there were three people in that office. The victim, Kane Bullard, who was already dead. The defendant, Ron Delight, who was out cold. And the third person, the real killer. Hypothetically, yes. Now then, in this situation, if the real killer made an escape, what would happen? The only ones left in the room would be the victim and Ron Delight. And, and if any security guards came running in at that time, they would think that I was the murderer! Yes. That was precisely the real killer's objective. To frame Ron Delight for the murder. <laughs> he took a, a drink of coffee just to spit take. Murder! Order! Ah, it would seem. I've been made to eat my words once again. Actually, you've been made to do a spit take with a cup of coffee. But Mr. Wright, who was it? Who was it that tried to frame me? Uh, wait, wait a second. I'm the one and only Master Mask, so... Nick, you mean the real killer is... We're gonna drag that person in here right now. B but who is it? We know who it is, they just gave us his silhouette again. I don't have any solid proof yet, but think about it. The killer knew Mr. Delight's identity, and they also knew that he had been called to KB security that night. So the killer used him to execute a well-crafted plan to murder Kane Bollard. Hmm, now then, let's hear your accusation, Mr. Wright. Who was it that framed Mr. Ron Delight for the murder? We, well, we all know who it is, but let's just go down for fun. Can't be Master Mask, because Master Mask is Ron. On, well, we're gonna skip him, because it's obviously him. Can't be Ron Delight because he's there. Desiree cares about her husband too much. Adrian Andrews is too disconnected from this. Larry is too stupid. Godot was there and he was dead. So it literally has to be Luke at me. Unless you want to go with the third option that they're masked to mask with somebody else this entire time. But we know that not to be the case. Look at me. Detective Luke at me. He's the only one who could have done it. Ace Detective... Look at me? You mean Master Mask did it? Your Honor, the person being tried in the court next to us is not Master Mask at all. Hey, Larry isn't stupid, he's misunderstood. He left his guard job to get slapped by his ex. His ex's new boyfriend. I think that he's kind of, he's at least stupid adjacent. He is, in actuality, the true murderer of Kane Bullard. Order! Order! Mr. Wright, explain yourself! Theft and murder. Which is the more serious crime? They're not even close. Murder is the more serious crime, of course. It's a capital crime subject to capital punishment. Please remember the trial from yesterday, if you would. When Luke Atme confessed, there was a huge commotion in the courtroom. Of course. A famous detective was unmasked as, well, Master Mask. Instead of being convicted of murder, he was found guilty of grand larceny. That was his true objective all along. Not really. Well, actually... Actually, yeah. I think he might have actually been wanting to be caught for grand larceny instead because his target for being the 
murderer ha hadn't been caught for that and instead was being tried for stealing the urn. But at the same time, he put up still a bit of a fight. Hmm. I don't know. We'll, have, we'll see. That was his true objective all along. To be found guilty? Master Mask had the op perfect alibi for when the murder took place. He was stealing the urn at Lordly Taylor. In other words, being found guilty as Master Mask was Luke Atme's airtight, watertight, and unassailable alibi. A guilty verdict as an alibi? You know, it's almost time. For, for what? For Luke Atme's verdict. It was a pretty simple trial, after all. If we're gonna stop this trial and stall that one, we need to do it now. Of course, that's assuming you have proof that the detective was the one who committed the murder. And I do. At the very least, the blackmail should. I really like this case. It is very interesting. Mr. Luke Atme's trial has indeed attracted the attention of the entire country. If we were to intrude and fail to provide adequate proof of his true crime, Mr. Delight would be left with no grounds for appeal. Am I really sure about this? Because let's go over the... Because hmm. all of the... This couldn't be used, right? Hmm. Maybe Ron's testimony or the blackmail? Hmm... I'm, I'm wondering, if the, well, because obviously it's building up to that. Hmm. Wait, Ron and Desi are the same age? Desi doesn't look old. Desi looks older than him. It's the youthful age of vigor in his eyes. Hmm. Well, let's see where the game goes and see if we need to present anything, because in my opinion, the first one would be the blackmail letter, because the blackmail letter says that red diamond you received, he has a red diamond. The second thing... I thought there was a second thing, but now my brain has gone and done blum 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 Oh, Ron's testimony, because he said somebody was... I don't think you need to present evidence here. But they said that it was going. We need proof evidence so that we can... All right. Am I really sure about this? Ha! Huh. I bet's only good when your life's, life's the ante. M Mr. Wright, I, I believe in you! Mr. Delight. So, so, please! I'm begging you! I keep forgetting that diamonds aren't huge. I, it doesn't even really look like a diamond. It's like a smooth oval. Thanks, but my decision will determine the rest of your life. Can I really risk your life like this? But the... Mia jump scare. I just realized how much evidence you get in the first trilogy. <laughs> Does that mean they cut down on the evidence later on? I don't think the amount of evidence has ever exceeded Rise from the Ashes. That was a lot of fucking evidence. Phoenix. W what was that? Don't stray, Phoenix. For your client, take the path of trust. That voice. It sounds like... Mamiya! Your Honor, the defense requests an immediate recess! Ha! Huh. So that's your answer, huh? Very well. I've decided as well. This court will now take a 20-minute recess. Mr. Wright, when we return, please summon Mr. Luke at me to the stand. Yes, Your Honor. Yeah, I'm pretty sure 1 through 5 is the undisputed king of the most evidence you'll ever get in a case. That's hilarious. Oh, did we jump back in time? <laughs> oh! Payne is the one who's prosecuting this case. Well, sir, detective at me. <laughs> I have to say, Mr. Payne, you've performed splendidly. Oh, no, sir, detective at me. You are the one who... That's enough. This court sees no reason to further prolong this trial. It's actually kind of interesting. They made a new design for the second judge. This court finds the defendant. Look at me. Wait! Don't hand down your verdict yet, please! Well, well, Sir Lawyer. Welcome to my courtroom. Who's this, Hoser, eh? 
My name's Phoenix Wright, attorney at law, and I wish to file an accusation against this man, Luke Atme. Accusation? You accuse Mask Damask? That man is not Mask Damask. He's just a ruthless murderer. What? That guy has bug eyes. <sighs> See, there's the red diamond right there. I <laughs> did they did they make the second judge Canadian? Who's this Jose? <laughs> That's hilarious. But we're gonna continue because I we have time. Let's go. It would be funny if the same judge did multiple cases at the same time. That would kind of be funny. It's kind of like Nurse Joy. They're all look the same in the same profession. My sis? I could have sworn I heard Mia's voice. So then, she's still alive inside your heart. I, I, Mia, Maya, if you ended with saying like, My sister's still alive, I would have clobbered you. Sent you to visit her. Nikki boy! Oh, Miss Delight. Is it true that Detective is the real killer? To be honest, we don't have any definitive proof. But he's the only one who could have done it. But wasn't he at Lordly Taylor that night? Now, not to mention it, we don't exactly know his motive. I mean, why would Detective Atme want to kill Bollard? Oops, it's almost time. Better get back to the courtroom. I need to find some solid proof. I have the proof! It's right here! In that, first off, somebody was blackmailing Ron so that he could get more things. But the blackmail letter says Red Diamond. I can imagine the judge is like, hold on, I gotta do this other case real quick and just speeds off. That's what all these recesses are for. He can really <laughs> speed through some of them. And it's gonna happen sooner rather than later. Now then, this court is back in session. Mr. Luke at me. Please take the stand. Well, well. How do you do, sir lawyer? I never would have thought to see you acting so recklessly. I couldn't let them hand down your verdict just yet. Not when it would have given you your perfect alibi. An alibi by the name of Mask Damask. I'm sorry, I'm afraid even the great Luke at me has no idea what you mean. Of course, I've been in the next courtroom ever since 10 o'clock this morning. I'm afraid there's no way I could know what's been going on in here. You've been in the defendant's seat all day long, correct? Being tried as Mask Damask. Indeed, it's truly child's play to fool the ignorant masses. Not only did the poor fools ask me to protect their valuables, they even gave me the generous reward upon returning their own property to them. Wow, double hint hint. I forget if I missed the hint hint or not. I think. Yeah, because blah, blah, blah. Bah. I'm glad I could make today's stream, and I'm glad you can make it as well. I'm feeling more stupid for failing this case. Ah, don't feel too bad. Sometimes hindsight really does help. Take this red diamond ring that sparkles upon my divine finger, for example, that constantly sparkles indeed. And, yeah, I'm glad that... Uh, thank you again, chat, for uh, having me read the blackmail again, because I completely missed that red diamond thing. It just popped out of my brain. I failed this court shortly after this moment. Triple hint hint. <laughs> so, you continue to insist that you are, in fact, Mask to Mask. Of course. Very well, then, Luke at me. Let us begin with this simple question. On October the 12th at 1 a.m., King Bullard was murdered. Where were you at that time? One without knowledge lacks even the knowledge that he should be ashamed of himself. But don't worry, I will not hold it against you, Sir Judge. Um, thanks. All right, Mr. Atme, the night of the murder. Speak. We're all ears. As you wish, Sir Prosecutor. I was stealing the urn as mask to mask, just as I announced it would. I had more than enough time to prepare. It was a pathetically easy job. A photograph contains no words, but in this case, one turned out to be my witness. The time at which the camera captured mask to mask was the same time as the murder. Which, 
you set up the camera, so why would you do that? Yeah, this is all weird. Remember to stay hydrated while this guy's being a weirdo. Hmm, it seems that the main point of discussion will be this photo of the crime scene. Everything else up until now is all part of his plan. There has to be a secret to this picture as well. The only thing I can think of is that it clearly shows the paint. And earlier they made a big deal about the statue covering the paint. So maybe that has part to do with it. We'll have to see what they ask. Even the great mask to mask cannot be in two places at once. Now then, if you'll excuse me, I have a verdict to receive. Unfortunately, Mr. Atme, we still have to do your cross-examination. A fool is too foolish to know that he is a fool. <laughs> Starting next stream, the Edgeworth counter will start. <laughs> I think he's trying to say that you're full of it, Nick. The only thing that's full of it is his alibi. I was stealing the urn, just as I announced I would. So this photograph is the proof, correct? Indeed it is. And the man in the photo is certainly wearing a mask. Oh, no, that was Phoenix saying that. That is why I'm called Mask to Mask. But conveniently, that also means that there's no way to tell who it really is. What do you mean? Huh. Are you saying that this is not in fact Luke at me? That it could be an accomplice dressed up as Mask to Mask to create an alibi. Oh, what an interesting idea. Are you saying that I, Lone Wolf Luke, had an accomplice? I don't think so. I don't think we should. Because uh, we know that it was him. Because my theory is that he modified the diddly D. I'm going to say no. If Luke Atme was at the KB security during the murder, then the mask has to be a fake. And there really was an accomplice. But right now, I have no idea who it was. And I don't have any idea right now either. Baseless objections are just what the guy wants. There's got to be another way. I'm going to find it. More than enough time to prepare. It was actually a pathetically easy job. I believe Adrian Andrews hired you at one point? That's right. That was over 20 days ago, if I'm not mistaken. You sent the calling card to Lordly Taylor 10 days before the heist. That would mean you sent out the card after you began your security watch, right? Hmm. Ha. Huh. Hmm. Ha. Ha. Hmm. For some reason, that just blasted me in the face. That makes me wonder. Does that mean he could have taken this picture? Before? Because he could have altered the data. Hmm. Indeed, there was no reason why I couldn't do both jobs at once. It was the perfect opportunity to steal my latest target. I see. You truly are evil, aren't you? Yes, evil is what I am. Hey, Nick, isn't that something odd about this? Huh? Detective Atme was always proud of his ace detective skills, right? But if the urn was stolen from Lordly Taylor while he was the only one watching it... He'd have no way to maintain his perfect ace detective persona. You know, that's true. It is kind of odd. Yeah, at the time. That's why I was so hooked, hooked on the fact that I know that he made it for, like, yeah, hmm. Yeah, da, da, da. Well, let's continue on. So by photograph, you mean the evidence here, is that correct? Indeed it is. That's it. The very thing that proves I committed the crime. The very thing that proves you committed the crime. When you think about it, it's really odd. You say that almost as if you had this picture taken on purpose. He was simply caught by the very camera that he had set up. Which is dumb. We all have days like that. Indeed, it turned out that there was no such thing as the perfect crime after all. Life is truly an ironic thing, a sad blue melody. It looks like I, I'd better gather more information for now. If he's truly the killer, there's got to be something phony in that photo. The time in which the camera captured Master was the same time as the murder. About that camera that took this photo. Oh, come now. It's all too clear what you're thinking. 
One thing I would applaud the anime for is handing the evidence. They wear gloves in court. That is a neat detail. Drink a game. Take a sip every time Godot says, can you prove it? That people would die. You think I altered the timestamp on the photograph, don't you? I'm afraid that's impossible. The camera was set up by Lord Lee Taylor, and on top of that, it was Lord Lee Taylor's staff that printed that picture's data. Unfortunately for the defense, there's no way the picture could have been altered. Except that he made the, f the diddly dee data, didn't he? I see. Looks like I'd better find something else that could be suspicious. So this alibi is false? It has to be. Or he couldn't have killed Mr. Bullard at KB Security. But I'm not really spotting anything unusual. There are two possibilities. Either the mask to mask in the photo is a fake, or the photo itself is. Hmm. Considering that Phoenix said that we need to gather more stuff, I guess now that we went and put the idea of it being a false photo in Phoenix's brain, because again, my one true witness, and when we pressed on it before, Phoenix said we need more info. Let's do it again and see what happens. Photographing me in this piece of evidence, correct? Indeed it is. That is it. This testimony is a little weird. Maybe. Surely even you understand by now. Lolly Taylor provided the camera. There's no way I could have tampered with it. That means I could not have killed Kane Bullard unless I had an accomplice. Hmm. I wonder if Phoenix is aware of you save scumming. He just gets a bunch of deja vu. And I don't think I've save scummed in a long time. At least none that would actually matter. I think there were some back, I think, in the first game, maybe? Or was it the second game? There were a few times where the game was utterly butchering me at times. Come on, think long and hard about that night. The basement warehouse in this picture that supposedly captures it. It's got to be here. Isn't there something funny about this picture? Isn't there something funny about the picture? Again, the only thing I can think of that would be in this picture, and the fact that they focused on it so hard was the Ami Faye statue. Because Andrew said she put it there to cover up the paint, and the paint's clearly seen. I saw you struggle in the rise from ashes on Angel's testimony, that's all I recall. You're really good at this. Thank you. So yeah, I'm going to say the paint should not be visible because of statue, but it was also moved that night. I think I get it. I think I get it. He took this picture at 1 a.m. at a different time. So, like, uh, again, my original idea was he had the... He made the... Because, like, he himself testified back in the first case of this case that he made the software that the computer was running and connected to the, the camera. That was my theory that he altered it through the software. But what if instead he dressed up as mask to mask on a different day at 1 a.m.? And that's why he moved the statue. Because he noticed that the statue was covering up the paint stain and the paint stain needed to be visible. And he didn't want people to be like, aha, what well, actually, the, this is me. So yeah, I'm going to say you bet there is. Are you implying that this picture is a fake? You bet I am. There's definitely something strange about this picture. We took a look around the basement warehouse that night before the theft took place. And there's something in this photo that doesn't match my memory of that night. Very well, then let's hear what you have to say. What about this photograph do you find funny? I'm going to say the paint. The funny part is right here. Why this... This is a blood stain! Ah! Uh, blood! Now this case is getting interesting! I'm not actually. It, that stain is actually pink paint. Oh, just paint. And peach colored at that. From blood to peaches, this judge sure loves going on his wild tangents. The problem with this photograph is not the paint. The problem is when you consider the layout of the basement warehouse. It turns out that something that should be there is nowhere to be seen. Uh. Well, Mr. Wright, what is supposed to be in this picture instead of the paint stains? It's supposed to be a statue. Pink paint is blood? Is this stinking Rampa? I've never played it, but I do know that the blood the, is pink in that. Interesting. 
It's supposed to be a statue. The supervisor of the treasure exhibit stated the following. Well, there's a good reason for that. On the day of the crime around noon, that golden statue just happened to arrive from the mountain and training hall. I realized that the statue would be the perfect size for covering up the paint stains. That's why I put it there where you first saw it. I myself was there the night the theft took place and saw the statue in that spot. If this picture was truly taken on that night, then that statue should have been there. But when I went there the day after the theft, that statue of the old bag was sitting in the corner. Hmm, perhaps it was somehow pushed there accidentally. Your Honor, this statue is slightly larger than yourself and quite heavy. It would take more than an accidental push to move it that distance. Ha, in that case, can you prove it? Can you give us the rhyme and reason as to why the statue was moved that night? Because he realized that it needed to be moved, so he moved it intentionally. C can you do that, Nick? Never mind who moved it. The real question is, why did they move it? Because my man, he took that picture ahead of time. So what he did was he realized once he got there that night to perf make sure everything was going well, he moved it. Can you prove it? I feel like you would get some special treatment if you're a lawyer working a case of, of a thing stolen from you. Technically, it wasn't stolen from Phoenix. It was stolen from his assistant. Well, Mr. Wright, I hope you're prepared with your answer. Who was it? The one that moved the golden statue. It has to be him, right? Because that's the only thing that makes sense. And also, he gave us the devil eye. So, I'm going to say it was him. There's no other reason to say anyone else. The one who moved the statue is none other than Luke at me. Come now, sir lawyer. There you go again on one of your strange delusions. Mr. Wright, what basis do you have for your strange delusions? It's very simple. The witness was the only one in the basement warehouse that night. That is indeed very simple. However, why would I want to move a heavy golden statue? The reason for moving the golden statue. Here's where our battle really begins. Well, Mr. Wright, what reason did the witness have to move the statue? The reason can be found here in this photograph. Look at me. You pretended to be masked to mask to create an alibi by showing you were at Lordly Taylor that night. But this photograph contains a single fatal flaw. If the statue had been moved there, your lie would be exposed like cheap film at a drugstore. That is why you had to move this statue. A single fatal flaw? Interesting theory. Please enlighten us. Can you prove it? Uh, ba ba ba. Can we. Pr hmm. The fatal flaw. Again, if we. I wonder what it wants now. Because. It can't just be clicking on the paint stains again, because we are asserting... We are asserting that there... This was taken before? Because, let's see. Is there anything that's relevant? It can't be the paint stains, because we already did that. It can't be Mass to Mass. Could it be... And it can't be the box, because... Or could it? Is it the box? The box doesn't have any paint splotches on it, but it wasn't from a, a single angle, and there's no reason to say that, because there's nothing about a fake thing. The only thing I can think of is... The time stamp, maybe? That's the only thing that jumps to mind. Because this is all meant to be like, oh, this happened at this time. And he moved the statue. Why did he move the statue? And why is moving the statue relevant to this and the paint? It's because of the time, I, I think. Because he wanted it to be like, ah, around one, the urn was stolen. And he took this before... Like, before the bibbidi ba was stolen. Like, or not stolen. This was taken before 
the statue got there at all. So he had no idea. So the paint stain is there. And he took this picture. And then the statue arrived, and Andrews put it over the paint stain to cover her shame. And on the night, he realized, wait, if the statue was meant to be there on this night, but I took this photo before, I'm going to shame you. Naturally, the lie in this photo is the timestamp. What do you mean? I'll tell you exactly what I mean. On the night in question, Luke at me went to KB Security and murdered Kane Bullard. Yeah, this is the point where I died. I just got too confused with the idea that uh, first type step couldn't be the contradiction, but then it had to be the contradiction. Still a solid case with solid deductions overall. Brilliant deduction. It's the only thing that made sense, because maybe the maybe I could have gone for the case, but there was no reason to think that... Because, th again, the case that's being carried by Damask didn't have paint stains on it, but the paint stains were only from a certain angle, and there's no reason to assume that he was taking out a different case. At least none, nothing that was brought up beforehand. Like, if they brought up, like, oh, but if... Like, if there was a long, tried-and-true segment of... Damask being dressed up as and taking another box out first. Eh, I picked the box the first time and got it wrong. But yeah, the only other thing that stood out to me that could possibly be relevant was the time. <laughs> it's all crazy. Therefore, it's obvious. It would have been impossible for him to have been at Lordly Taylor at this time. <laughs> the time set was my second choice, but only because it was the only other thing meaningful. Yeah, that's what I thought. It was like, for me, it felt like it would have been the paint stains, but it couldn't be the paint stains, and the box didn't feel right, so it had to be the timestamp. But what does that have to do with the statue being moved? Remember, if you will, Your Honor, when was this statue placed beside the warehouse door? Well, the statue was taken down to the warehouse on the day of the crime, and it was placed there in order to cover up the paint. Exactly. Luke Atme had already decided on the time when he was going to kill the victim. And so in order to create an alibi for that time, he took this picture days before the murder took place. What the? Of course, the statue hadn't been brought down to the basement warehouse yet. Ah. So on the day of the crime, Mr. Atme must have been quite nervous. As nervous as a long-tailed cat in a rocking chair factory, so to speak. That's an odd way to do it. And when he... And when he moved the statue, the sword fell, I guess. Why? Because something that wasn't supposed to be there had been brought down and placed where it wasn't supposed to be. I gotta say, you think better than I do. No, I just go off on random tangents. Like, <laughs> I forget. I went on some crazy ones in past games. If you ever read the one 1990s puzzle books, you be the jury. And I always worry about the cartoonish art style. I've never heard of that before, that you be the jury. And that is why Luke Atme had to move the statue on the night of the murder. He did it to make the room match the way with the way it had been in this photo. No! Ah! Order! Order! Mr. Atme, is this true? One moment, Your Honor. A have you forgotten this? What's that? The data for the basement warehouse computer. According to this, the camera did indeed go off on the night of the crime. It's true that the camera had been set up by the Lordly Taylor staff. However, the program used to manage that data was yours. That alone would have allowed you to tamper with the data. <sighs> Almost all of you be the jury solutions involve pointing to the problems in the photographic evidence. And I worry because some of the drawings of people are cringeworthy in quality. Eh. Order! Order! Mr. Gadot! What is the meaning of this? He has a strong jawline. Gadot! I warned you about making me wait! Now put that coffee down! My eleventh cup. I've promised to drink no more than seventeen during a trial. Which means I'm still good to the last drop. However, that offense has a very good point. A good point? So what? We are all but travelers on a road of infinite points. So a circle? So I always think I'm missing something because it's cartoonish. Eh. Um, I think he's got his points mixed up with his other points. 
So you say this photograph was taken ahead of time, and that the statue was moved in order to make a match. That's a very interesting idea, however. There's one point that can't be denied. Which is? That's that it's only a possibility. Men that are trapped by the chains of maybe can never reach their dreams. There are three reasons why I love small streamers. The chat doesn't move as fast, the streamer reads my messages, and they need love too, damn it. True. That's very true. Even the judge agrees. No way. Don't fall for that, your honor. Hey, Mr. Damask. Yes? If there's no funny business in your actions as Damask, there should be no problem with you telling us your strategy, so let's hear it. And four, Neon is the only streamer I've known who does a good Godot voice. Huzzah! I'm special! Please tell us about your plan to steal the sacred urn. I first received the request from Lordly Taylor about 20 days ago. The urn was placed in a box in Savari! It was then sent to the house. Silence phone. Hence, I was actually unable to see the urn for myself until the day of the crime. I knew it was an extremely valuable treasure, so I, went to he uh, so I sent my card ten days beforehand. But that makes no sense, because you only go after rare and priceless things. I th well, then again, I guess that's his argument. He didn't know what it looked like, but at the same time, he would have... Mm, meh. I then handled security by myself to ensure that my crime would go smoothly. At last, I held the urn in my hands for the first time at 1 a.m. on October 12th. Hmm. That's pretty much all the stuff we've heard before, isn't it? Hmm. I want to quickly... He said he's left his calling card. No reason about that. No. Uh, I could have sworn the Shishishito would have been brought up more, like it dropped when he moved it or something. Wait, we, we can we can check out we can we can check out the calling card to to the security at Lordly Taylor. I'll be coming to purloin the most priceless work of art to, on display in your treasures of curing exhibit. Take good care of the speckled urn, won't you? I I never knew that you could look at it, but also speckled urn. Why 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 do we say speckled urn? Why? <laughs> this one's a bit tough, but you got it, though. What do you think of this game's soundtrack? All of the Ace Attorney games have wonderful soundtracks. You never read the calling card either? No! No one said anything! I thought it was just like, ah, it just had the diddly D emblem. He's coming to steal your shit. But yeah, speckled urn. But it's not speckled. Do we still have it? Can we look at it? It's not speckled. Is he high? I'm sure we'll think of it later. It's pretty much all the stuff we've heard before, isn't it? Yeah, but we will find the truth hidden in the nuggets of new information he gave. Witness, you're sure there are no mistakes this time. Zavari! The unbreakable speckled urn. Oh, wait. Very well then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Why did he call it a speckled urn, though? That makes no sense, Billy. Even with the paint splotches, it doesn't look speckled to me. It seems more dirty than anything. You were asked to guard the urn by Miss Adrian Andrews, is that right? Indeed, it seemed that they had uh, heard of my Zavarkling reputation. I see Miss Andrews is still attracting the weirdos. You better watch out too, Maya. <laughs> the urn was placed in a box in Zavari! It was then sent to the warehouse. You mean in this box? Yes, that pathetic box. Lady Andrews was especially taken with that urn, and she wouldn't let anyone into the storeroom, not even me. Huh, interesting new tidbit. Hence, I was actually unable to see the urn for myself. I forgot to hit that because I'm a fool. There's a testimony name that's literally called the Roast of Phoenix Wright. That's funny. So you're sure that you had never seen the urn before? Indeed! You may ask Lady Andrews to confirm you for yourself. My security was focused entirely on the entrance to that warehouse. However, I look at me. Let no information whatsoever slip through my fingers. And, he ex and, he's, and he's certain that he never saw it before. I knew it was an extremely valuable treasure, so I said before. Actually, it's the Disson of Phoenix Wright, which is another reason five DLC is excellent. 
You mean this calling card? That's right! That is, without a doubt, my calling card! I guess Mr. Delight didn't make this after all. Of course, because Apne knew about the emblem. Making this card authentic would have been child's play for him. I then handled security by myself. Then no one entered the basement warehouse. Unfortunately, there were many different treasures being taken there. Thus, for a period of approximately five days, people were indeed going in and out of the warehouse. For the first time, you say. And this is the photo that proves that, huh? Indeed, to be honest, even the photo was taken... I didn't think it would be it matter terribly much. Hey, Nick, if this photo is fake, Detective Abney might have stolen the urn whenever this was was taken. That's true. You know, he's been saying that he never saw the urn until that night. That's what I was saying. If we can prove that he's lying there, we can wrap up this up and put a, uh, put a bow on it. I need to take a good hard look at the court record. Hmm, not a lot to go on, is there? But Detective's been covering his tracks. There's only one thing we need to prove in this cross-examination. That he took this photo well before the actual night of the crime. All right, then, how do we do that? There's one thing that Atme stated very clearly that he had never seen the urn before. We need to prove that he's lying. Hey, that's fair for calling spoiler alert when I'm correcting you, spoiler alert. I'm saying Case's excellent isn't really a spoiler. I mean... Well, five DLC, I, I'm assuming you mean like the fifth games of DLC. But I don't think that's spoiler to say that a game has DLC, personally. Yeah, DLC, like, there isn't much to be gained from, like, in a DLC of a later game, there's a testimony that's the, the dissin of Phoenix Wright. I don't think that's a spoiler, personally. Doesn't really give away much, it's just kind of amusing. I held the urn for the first time. Let's see. Unable to see for myself. He called it a speckle urn. Broken repair two weeks. Wait. Ten days beforehand. That's less than two weeks. Besides, if Neon gets the second trilogy, they'll have no problem accessing it. Because hopefully by the time hopefully they'll include it in the apollo tr like collection that would be that would be mean that would be mean if they do do that i'll have to emulate it in the end because i am i don't have access to a capture card for 3ds and i assume it's a 3ds game two weeks ago it got broken and got paint splattered on it You said they sent the calling card ten days ago, uh, ten days before the crime, and it called it a speckled urn. Speckled urn. I guess. Objection. Doesn't even look speckled to me. It just looks dirty. Mister Atme, if you really are mask to mask, then you also wrote this calling card, correct? But of course! Is there a problem with that calling card? Allow me to read a passage from the calling card that Mask Damask had written. Take good care of the speckled urn. Now the speckled here surely refers to this pink pattern on the sacred urn. Yes, that is true. But so what? The truth be told, there's no way that Mask Damask could have known about this pattern. What do you mean? <laughs> The ultimate wishful thinking is that Neon's great streams will popularize Ace, of, uh, uh, Ace Attorney Investigations too, so much that Capcom has no choice but to localize it. If I become, like, the ultimate god of Ace Attorney streaming, maybe. And also, this reminds me, I'll need to make a, a full list of my, like, from worst to best cases of Ace Attorney, of, of the original trilogy once I beat this game. That's the thing I need to remember to do. I need to start making that list after this. The pink spotted pattern on this urn is actually nothing more than paint stains. Paint stains? And these stains did not appear until after the urn had been taken to Lordly Taylor. Hmm. 
I'm not finding this joke to be very funny, Mr. Trite. The day the sacred urn was taken to the warehouse, the urn was broken due to human error, or should I say error-prone human. I'll watch Neon review my favorite games any day. So yeah, I don't think I'll do a full-on review of the games, because again, like... There isn't really much to go over review-wise, but I do think it would be really cool to go over the cases in a list format. Because that would also kind of cover it really well, actually. Because really, the cases are the main point of the game, and reviewing the cases basically reviews the game, and all the games kind of play the same. Eh. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll make a, a full super list someday after I finish these. I also need to finish my current review. I voiced... I voiced a script recently for a video that I need to then make more assets for and then edit. And that's when the pink paint got onto the urn. Uh, you can't be serious. And yet this calling card clearly mentions the paint pattern. Which means Detective Atme had been the, uh, seen this urn long before the crime ever took place. Unfortunately for me, I'm holding back on ranking all the cases until I play uh, Dual Dust... Dual Destinies and Spirit of Justice, and my trilogy ranking recently changed. For me, I'll first do, like, I'll probably do it trilogy by trilogy. I'll do, like, the original Ace Attorney, then I'll do the Apollo Justice tr uh, trilogy, and then after I play through all of the... And then maybe I'll do, like, an Ace Attorney Investigations ranking, and then after I do all of the uh, uh, Ace Attorney games, I can do a super-duper list like Sh what Shea Frillis kind of does from time to time. In fact, he saw it when this fake photo was taken. Puh! And because this photo is a fake, your alibi for the night of the murder is no longer holds water. Witness, do you have anything to say for yourself? <laughs> All right, that did it. He's broken. Um, Nick, I think it's still a little early for a victory pose. That super video will be four hours long. Considering that my current, the current video that I'm working on, which is uh, a review of a uh, two-part uh, TV show pilot, so like 44 minutes of content to go over, and the audio for that script is uh, an hour and 30 minutes long... I bet the uh, actual super video would probably be longer than four hours. I'm a windbag. My all-time favorite nowadays, probably the unspeakable story, Bridge to the Turnabout, Farewell My Turnabout, or Reunion and Turnabout. My thoughts on Justice for All have improved a lot after seeing Neon play. Ha ha! I have improved a game's reputation. I have already done good in the world. Ha. Huh. It's so sad. No one has any conviction these days. Conviction, you say? Yesterday, we all decided unanimously that this man was mask to mask, and now we're calling him a murderer. You don't think we're being a tad fickle? But that's a good point. No way, don't fall for that too, your honor. You say that Luke Atme was the one who killed Kane Bullard. Then let me ask you this. Why would he do that? <laughs> An excellent point. I already know. It's the blackmail. Motive, my Mr. Wright. Motive! Might you marry murderous motive manifest? But Nick, he's getting a second wind. If he, if he prepared an alibi and pinned his crime on Ron Delight, as you say, he must have had a very strong motive for murder. The only one that with any motive we've seen is Ron Delight. Isn't that right, detective? Indeed, and according to my own research, the boy's motive is clear. Without a motive, it's nearly impossible to prove guilt in a murder case. Now then, maybe you can enlighten us into what the def defendant's motives were. I'd be honored to, sir, old-timer. They're doing everything they can to make Ron look suspicious. Despite our lack of hard information, this may be our only chance. Justice for All is excellent purely because the lead writer admitted that he wrote the entire story drunk. Don't take Godot seriously, the ability to publicly retract statements is actually a sign of courage. Just for all is good because Phoenix struggles and hits his lowest moments in that journey. It's also kind of interesting that, like, none of the cases are really tied together, which is kind of interesting. 
I, Luke Cat, me had no points of contact with the victim whatsoever. King Buller decided to investigate Master Mask and simply mistook who he was. It was Mr. Bullard who wrote the blackmail letter and sent it to Ron Delight. And it was again Mr. Bullard who harbored a grudge against Mr. Delight for his betrayal. Mr. Bullard's mistake is quite excusable. The defendant truly believes he is Master Mask. And that is why Mr. Delight saw it fit to kill Kane Bullard. Truly a tragedy. <laughs> I'm sticking to the drunk rider reason, copper. So the victim, King Bullet, blackmailed the defendant? This is the blackmail letter found in the defendant's apartment. A handwriting test confirmed that Mr. Bullet was indeed the one who wrote the letter. Well, what? Well, Mr. Wright, begin your cross-examination. As usual, we're going to press on everything. And then we'll have to see, because the blackmail letter has to be the the nailing point. That and, presumably, the Kane's list. While you try to nail a detective, remember, stay hydrate. And who in the world is going to prove that? I will. After doing a thorough background check of Detective Atme and Kane Bullard, we were unable to find any links between them. It's all in the report. Hmm, perhaps they were connected through their work. They were both involved in security. Nope. That was blunt. In any case, the only one with a motive was Mr. Delight. But wait. Don't they? Because... Actually, they should have a connection. Because, wasn't that the whole thing? Like, their company was getting hurt because, yeah, the company was getting hurt because of all the diddly Ds. Richard Wellington is the best character Ace Attorney. I forget who Richard Wellington is if I've run into him. Seeing how there's no connection between KB and Atme. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Came Bullard decided to investigate Master Mask and simply mis mistook. That's right, mistook from the old Norse mistaka, meaning to take an error. Um, that wasn't what I meant. Just who did the victim mistake Master Mask to be? Why, the answer is obvious. Ron Delight, of course. Boy, I'd like to wipe that smug look off his face. Hmm. I don't think there's a reason to press. We'll press everything else and come back and press harder if we need to. Hold off on pressing him further for now. Exactly. I was looking forward to one of his long-winded stories. It was Mr. Bullard who wrote the blackmail letter and sent it to Ron Delight. You mean this blackmail letter right here? It says bring $50,000. And the high-end writing is, without a doubt, the victims. There's no mistake. We have an official report to prove it. But I don't see an addressee on this letter anywhere. An addressee? This letter was discovered in Ron Delight's apartment, and Mr. Delight did show up at the designated place and time. The fact that there's no addressee is irrelevant. I wonder. What's up, Nick? I just had a thought. What if that blackmail letter wasn't meant for m Mr. Delight? Large bananas are the most interesting subplot in all of Ace Attorney. There's a plot point about large bananas? I'll be in. Oh, yeah! The catcher glove! From the tutorial case in the second game. I almost forgot! <laughs> or if the blackmail letter wasn't meant for Mr. Delight. Oh, do you have any evidence on that? For some reason, I just can't shake the feeling that there's something not quite right about this blackmail letter. I struggled with 2 1. I forget if I did as well. There were some odd points in it. Well, everyone, are you quite satisfied? The only reason I made it through the process of elimination on evidence. <laughs> the first contradiction killed me. I was slow on the uptake. But I think, I think the game was pretty upfront with it. Because again, if you don't, I'll take that red diamond you received the other day instead. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna kill it. Objection. Mind if I ask you a few questions, Detective Atme? 
Well, if it's just a few, I guess it's all right. I died in memories, too, just because I forgot to fall off on a press. I hate when that happens. I really do need to, like, eh, figure out, a, like, a meta game kind of way of going through cross-examination. Like, if I don't feel good about pressing further, try everything else, then come back. In fact, I probably jumped the gun on presenting this, but the game really made it look like it was a good idea to present it. When you said this letter was addressed to Ron Delight, I couldn't help but notice one major contradiction. Contradiction? I don't know whether, where a walking contradiction like you gets off saying like that. You're one to talk. At times like these, men are made to express themselves with their fists. Why don't you show us what you've got there, Junior? Indeed, time to man up, Mr. Wright. Show us the contradiction. Show us the contradicting evidence in the content of the blackmail letter. Wouldn't... Uh... Show us the contradiction. Show us the contradicting evidence in the content of the blackmail letter. If you don't want your true identity revealed to the world, on the, if you don't, I'll tell. Is it not just the thing again? I'm losing my mind. The only other thing I can think of in regards to Luke at me and things like the, 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 the newspaper clipping, that's the only thing I can think of. Because the Kane's list has nothing about like $50,000. No paper clipping? Okay. I thought it would just be like, point out the phrase. And I'd be like, ah, oh, red diamond. And then the, the only thing, because I again remember that, but why would the contradiction in my brain is burning? And my brain was just hooked on the newspaper clipping because the newspaper clipping, uh, like if I remember correctly, mentioned when we first got it, that KB security was getting hurt by the Damask things. I thought this one was weird. You have to express the contradiction in the blackmail letter with another piece of evidence. That doesn't feel like it matches, but we'll see. Take a good look at this newspaper clipping. It contains a picture of the Tear of Eminon, the stolen jewel. But what about it? The problem is the jewel's color. What? What did it... Okay, I want to see. Tear of Eminon. It, I did not know it was meant to be red. Okay. I assume. Color. I'm not much for discussing color myself. Is it because you're colorblind? Is that why you wear a weird face? According to the clipping, the color was stolen. According to the clipping, the color of the stolen jewel was blue. However, in the blackmail letter, a totally different jewel is mentioned. I'll take that red diamond you received the other day. I feel like I just got lucky. Red? Which means the red diamond described in the blackmail letter is not the tear of Eminon that Mask to Mask stole at all. And your point is, Mr. Trite, so you're trying to say that this blackmail letter was intended for someone else. That is what you're trying to say, right, Trite? That is what you're trying to say, right, Mr. Wright? Well, that is what you're trying to say, right, Nick? Yes. <laughs> this is, this is who Kane Bullard was actually. He believed he believed D. Naturally, it was you, Detective at me. Do you have some sort of basis for that claim? You have been personally involved in every single mask to mask case. And in the last case, you recovered what was stolen and received a jewel as your reward. A jewel? You are on a... Damn, I like this case even more now. 
You're on a roll, my guy. I just got lucky because my brain was hooked on uh, newspaper clipping. That's the only thing that kind of is related to Balf, right? I think. My brain just was... My brain led me on a, a journey of accidental victory. Probably the one wrapped conspicuously around your finger. That red diamond ring! <laughs> that is the red... That's the diamond referred to in the letter. Which means that King Bullard wrote that letter in order to blackmail you! Oh! <laughs> the most related thought process is enough for these games. <laughs> order! Order in the court! Um, um, order, I'd say? It seems you've gone too far with your childish pranks, Mr. Trite. Oh, I don't like the way he said that. King Bullard blackmailing Luke at me? Are you for real? Yes, I am. Nick, come on, stand up to him. Then answer me this. The blackmail letter contains the following passage. If you don't want your identity revealed to the world... Yes, it certainly does. Kane Bullard threatened to make Luke Atme's identity public knowledge. An identity he wanted to keep a secret. So just what was that identity? Why would he wear the ring? Because... It was a thing specifically given to him by the people that he retrieved the other thing for. Like, previously he got, like, a portrait back for a company or whatever, and they rewarded him with that diamond ring. Except in... <laughs> censored. Turnabout Serenade. I actually died because I knew the point, but not the item make it. That happens to me so much in the previous, like, first game. I haven't killed King Kane Bullard because he was afraid of a secret becoming known. What was the identity he wanted to keep a secret? The only thing I can think of is that he was a fraud. Oh, like Maya said. Maya originally said, why would he risk his ace detective identity like that? And the same could be said here. Kane knew that somebody was guiding Mask to Mask. Somebody on inside information, but also knew that Luke Atme couldn't be Master Mask himself. So maybe Kane Bullard figured that Luke Atme was an accomplice to Master Mask. Greatest Attorney was better about it, in my opinion. I'll need to get to that one eventually. Except for the one part I don't talk about. <laughs> oh boy! Foreshadowing of evil. This is what it all comes down to, Nick. The identity that Luke Atme wanted so desperately to keep secret identity was... A blackmailer. Luke Atme was a blackmailer. Objection. Hey now, you're an all-star. Get your game on. Drink coffee. Isn't that a little different from what you've been saying? You said that Kane Bullard was the one blackmailing Luke Atme. How did KB figure all, all the, despite not having connections to Luke? Because all of the places that were stolen from, uh, by Mask to Mask were securities, had securities done by KB. And so I guess they figured since Luke Atme was involved and probably was hired by many of the buildings probably once they received the calling card, they would bring Ace Detective Luke Atme to come protect them, of which he would probably then have access to their security that he would then give to Ron to circumvent, is what I think. That feeling when you blackmail a blackmailer. <laughs> Are you saying that Atme was blackmailing someone else on top of that? Uh, you have to admit that does sound a little odd. It's not odd, it's the only thing that makes any sense. <laughs> Bullard, I used the blackmail to blackmail the blackmailer. That's complicated as hell, but it makes sense. Sometimes th the world is evil. Kane Bullard was blackmailing Luke at me, but Ron Delight was also being blackmailed by a certain someone. So, did you start receiving blackmail letters after this incident? Yes, it was just a few days after the Tear of Eminon heist. After that, I started getting the plans in the mail. I received plans from some very kind person. Incredibly detailed plans. Detailed plans? I know in the anime it actually has a different but simpler explanation. That's funny. 
In which case, that would mean that Ron Delight was actually masked to mask. That is what we are claiming. Someone else came up with the plans and had Mr. Delight steal his targets for him. And that someone was none other than Luke at me. Shush! Silence! <laughs> now I see it's all becoming clear. Well, what is? When you were in grade school, you received the same report card every year. Careless with the tendency to jump to conclusions. Am I wrong? How did you? Also, Luke's sweating pole makes me uh, worry just how greasy his nose really is. We're approaching the part. Oh no, the part. You say that I, Luke at me, was blackmailing Ron Delight? In which case, I would naturally know all about his relation to Master Mask. Well, yes. Ron Delight started receiving plans from his second crime onward, correct? Which means I learned of his identity when he committed the first crime. Good point. You certainly couldn't have blackmailed him otherwise. I think I know exactly where we're going with this. I think I know. I think we're going to need to present the newspaper clipping again. You certainly couldn't have blackmailed him otherwise. It's amazing how Tron Tribulations has three cases that could all be my favorite depending on the day. That's really good. In that case, let's see some hot bitter evidence. During the first crime, how did Luke Atman know that Ron Delight was masked to mask? Because he found his diddly dee diddly dee. I think I see it. See what? When you were in grade school, you received the same report card every year. Gets into lots of mischief trying to be the center of attention. But what did you mean? The newspaper clipping. I'm assuming 3-2 and 3-5, but what's the third? Turnabout Beginnings. Turnabout Beginnings is 3-4. Wait, there's a three, there's a fifth case? I d then again, didn't they want to have a fifth case somewhere? I forget. Hmm. <laughs> Surprise. Interesting. Here's a picture of you and Ron Delight in his guard uniform. It seems that M Mask to Mask didn't just disappear into thin air. He just took off his outfit and hid it in a bucket. That, that sounds far too stupid to be true. 3-4 had one part where I got pissed. Oh boy, I can't wait to be emotioned. Correct. With tricks like that, he couldn't fool a baby, let alone an ace detective. Then that's when you figured it out, Mr. Atme. That's when you learned that under his mask, Master Mask was really Ron Delight! G -g 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 -g. What the? Wasn't he supposed to be Master Mask? Not only that, it looks like he wasn't even an ace detective. I can't believe it. He was just a slimy blackmailer. What a fraud! Trying to pass himself off as an ace detective. Why you? How dare you expose me like that? Why I? I mean, I've never blackmailed anyone in my life! I'm a famous and proud East detective, and also Master Mask! Why can't you understand that? I'm glad it's not, because I probably would have hated Justice for All if it did. Yeesh. Though this game's third case is supposed to be part of Justice for All, and would you would have hated it if it- Oh, that's harsh. Honestly, 3-4 had some parts where I felt there were multiple contradictions, but only one was valid. Oh, I'm gonna hate that. 3-3 makes me wildly uncomfortable. I can't wait to experience that. I'm afraid you're neither proud thief nor an ace detective. You're a blackmailer and a murderer. That is your true identity. Why you? How dare you even dare to imply I could ever touch those little depths? Why not trying to do something yourself with those big mouths of yours? You're fools, fools, I say. None of you can come up to my genius. You're really just jealous. Sagoon, this is out to Come on to me. There's nothing ace detective cannot handle blackmail. I'm going to threat sound. Get away from all. <laughs> it's enough to make one laugh. Whew. I had a thought there. I had a thought and then it vanished. Oh yeah, it's just like your real identity reminded me of the line that Phoenix said. Reminds me of his ultimate in Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Ultimate. And no alibi, no dreams, no identity, no hope. <laughs> Time to pay for your crimes. Spaces are important, folks. It would seem we finally arrived at the real answer. That was quite a performance by Mr. Atme. Bailiff, please prepare a cell for Mr. Atme. Why? The hammer that strikes too fast has no time to aim. 
What do you mean? I'm already prepared to deliver my ruling. Allow me to say one thing. I will be the one to judge. You don't get much more in your face than that. It appears that your claws weren't quite sharp enough, Mr. Tract. What? what do you... It's true that you've proven a lot of things. Things like Luke Atme was a filthy blackmailer. And that he wasn't at Lordly Taylor that night of the murder. That's right, that's why he's the one who killed Mr. Bull. But... Another case, another fake-out victory. <laughs> There's still one thing you've yet to prove. What's that? Just because he wasn't at the warehouse doesn't mean he was at the murder scene. Therefore, if you can't prove that this pitiful excuse for a man was at KB security, then I don't see how a verdict can be delivered. No. No way! Order! Oh, Mr. Wright? This is it. This is the final round. Do we even have anything that could prove that he was there? Is it the fact that there's no fingerprints on it when it was pressed? Godot has a small urinal hidden inside his bench for all the coffee he drinks. Ah, I can see it. I've got to prove that at me was at Mr. Bullet's office that night. I will see. But, but can you really prove that? That's long enough, Mr. Trite. I want to hear your answer. That night, Luke Atme was at KB Security, and the defense... Can we prove it? I don't think we can. Because... <laughs> Man, you delivered. Luke's no space sentence perfectly. I don't think I did. I just kind of jumped around when <laughs> I could. Hmm... I don't think I can. <laughs> Apart from Goon. <laughs> I just rambled off. I think I did better with his constant rambling than I did with, uh, Windy, though. With the wind bag. But I don't think we have any evidence that directly proves it that he was, well, yeah, we know that he was a blackmailer. We know that he was being blackmailed, but we can't prove that he was there on the night. I don't think we can. The Wicked Witch of the Witness Stand, Old Windbag, yes. And besides, if we say we can't prove it, the game will probably re-railroad us onto can prove it anyway, so eh. I... I can't prove it. Just as I thought. But, if we hear more of Detective Atme's testimony... Unfortunately, that's as far as you go, Mr. Trite. What do you mean? I won't allow for any more testimony. That's what I mean. What? Have you forgotten? Luke Atme is here after we interrupted his own trial. And you have failed to prove that he committed the murder. I think it's time for this witness to return to his own trial. And face his guilty verdict as fa mask to mask. N no. Well now, Sir Lawyer, it seems that love wins out in the end after all. I'm the ace detective as well as master mask. My verdict will verify that. Just as Ron Delights will verify that he is the true murderer. I declare that with my full force of my ace detectiveness. Order! Order in the court! That's enough deliberation over this witness. I can't believe this. At this rate, Ron is... Don't give up now, Nick. We still have tomorrow. We can look for more evidence and... By then, it'll be too late. Huh? Why? Fortunately, the OG trilogy doesn't usually punish you for being incorrect with can't prove it. Oh, that's nice. Double jeopardy. One of the basic rules of any basic court. Double jeopardy? Should a defendant be tried and found innocent in court, that defendant cannot be tried again for the same crime. This is a fundamental rule of all courts, and it applies to this witness as much as it applies to anyone else. And uh, Great Ace Attorney, if you incorrectly say can't prove it, you always get a penalty. Oh boy. You should probably drop a save, though. Just trying to look out for you. Paranoia save, sure. Mr. Ratman will be found guilty in a matter of minutes. Guilty as Master Mask, which means he will be innocent as far as the murder of King Bullard is concerned. No way! The fact that you were unable to prove Mr. Atme's guilt of the crime here means that he will never again be tried as Cain Bullard's murderer. Uh, ah!
Now there's nothing I can possibly do to win. Even if Ron is proclaimed to be innocent, the real killer Luke at me will go free. You have cross-examined every statement the witness has said here today. And as long as there's no more testimony, I'm afraid I have to declare that there will be no further questioning of this witness. Are there any objections? Object. Object, my man. Then I hereby end the cross-examination of Luke at me. Attention. What? Francisca? I think I see it. Your Honor, when you were a child, this is what was your report card every year. Has poor hearing and often makes mistakes as a result. How did you... Phoenix, raise your head up high. Have you forgotten what I used to tell you? A lawyer, someone who smiles... No oh, wait, no. It's not Francisca, is it? Because that's the that sounds like Francisca's hold it, but it could be Mia. It could be Mia being channeled through Maya. But let's see. Didn't RT Game make the same mistake or something? <laughs> it's just like it, the the hold it or objection sounded so much like Francisca to me. That voice, no way. Long time no see, Phoenix. I think it was F Francisco, not Ma Mia. M Mia! This is the true power of the curing channeling technique. I know that it's what it's really Maya who's standing before me, but right now she's my mentor, Mia Faye. Now let's do this. But there's nothing more we can do, Mia! Without any more testimony, I can't cross examine! Dude, I can't believe Francisco was Phoenix's prosecutor for only two cases. Actually, yeah, she was. Huh. That's funny. But what do you mean? Your Honor, just now you said something very interesting. You've cross-examined every statement the witness has made here today. But, yes, that's true, but... Unfortunately, Your Honor, you're forgetting something. Earlier, after the last cross-examination, this witness made a number of remarks. Well now, Sir Lord, it seems that love wins out at the end after all. I'm the ace detective as well as Master Mask. My verdict will verify that, just as Ron Delights will verify that he is the true murderer. I declare that with the full force of my ace detectiveness. But yes, but those comments appear to have no importance whatsoever. Very well, then we shall prove their importance via cross-examination. At any rate, as long as the witness has made these remarks, we, the defense, assert our right to question them. Is that all right with you, prosecutor? Is is something the matter, Mr. Godot? Ah, nothing. Oh, sir lawyer, it looks like you're one step too late. If you think such a falsehood will do anything to me, look at... Let's hear it. Huh? It's true that the witness made some remarks. So then, let's hear this last bit of cross-examination. M Mr. Cadeau, what are you? Very well then, Mr. Luke at me. I'm going to allow the defense to cross-examine your earlier remarks. The defense would like to hear why you declared the defendant to be the true murderer. So please, give us one last bit of testimony. Wait, if Maya is channeling Mia, should we call her Maya? Should we still call her Maya? Eh, this court already knows about the channeling technique. <laughs> they they have pictures of Maya being Mia, so I wonder if they care. Not even the game addresses her as Maya. <laughs> I, uh... Phoenix, this is it. This is her absolute last chance. Yes, Chief. But that would be funny if they're like, Oh, hello, Mia. It's been a while. Indeed, it is true that I was not at Lordly Taylor. I had to leave to see about another vitally important job request. I had known about the date beforehand, so I had this photograph readied. My brilliant deduction was that what informed me that the true culprit was Ron Delight, and thanks to the key card and wallet, it was abundantly clear that he was there. How would you know that? I was also able to make a deduction from the buzzer, which only sounded once. The button did not have any fingerprints on it. Why? The victim would have left Prince if he sounded it, which means the killer sounded it. Mr. Delight was wearing his master mask outfit, which is why he left no Prince. And the blackmail letter, the victim likely just mistook the color of the jewel. Zavari! 
Therefore, all the evidence points to the poor boy. This testimony actually seems to hold up pretty well. The witness's earlier remarks do not appear to have been hastily prepared. All of his points have been explained and none of them seem to contradict anything. But of course. But how did you know about the emergency buzzer? The police investigation documents went directly through me. And I always look over all the documents. It's elementary, say lawyer. Uh, are you going to make even more trouble for us now, sir lawyer? I will not allow any of your usual shenanigans, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. We cannot postpone Luke Atme's trial any longer. This is your last chance. But hang on a sec. Just one chance? Ha. Huh. It seems that party's about to begin. Okay, maybe drop another save so you don't get... Uh, you'll be closer to this part. Yeah, from the way the game is saying that... Uh, it does seem harsh. Well, Phoenix... There isn't any evidence to contradict that testimony. So it would seem. What do you mean, so it would seem? Listen, Phoenix, pointing out contradictions doesn't always mean you have to present evidence, does it? At any rate, this is our last chance. If you can't point out a case-breaking contradiction, you lose. That's all there is to it. Phoenix needs... Phoenix needs a flopping animation like... Ryunosuka? I don't know who that character is for situations like this. Cup number 17, the last cup. It seems like time has come to put an end to this trial. I have to find a fatal contradiction in this testimony that I need to point out without presenting evidence. Which means all I can do is find the contradiction remark and press it. Remember, you only get one chance. It's nice of the game to do that. Very well then, Mr. Wright, please begin your final cross-examination. Before we throw you into the river to die. Alright, one final save. Let's see. Indeed, it is true that I was not at Lordly Taylor. I had to leave to see about another vitally important job request. I had known about the date beforehand, so I had this photograph ready. How would he know, though? How would he know about the date beforehand? Right? Hmm. My brilliant deduction was to inform me that the true culprit was Ron Delight. And thanks to the key card and wallet, it was abundantly clear that he was there. I was also able to make a deduction from the buzzer, which only sounded once. The button did not have any fingerprints on it. Why? The victim would have left prints if he sounded it, which means the killer sounded it. Mr. Delight was wearing his glove, which why he left no prints, and the blackmail letter, the victim just likely mistook the color of the jewel. Is it this? Like, is this a contradiction? Why would Ron Delight sound the alarm? Hmm. Because there's... Let's see. Because all of this is from... <laughs> My heart is beating 200 beats per minute right now. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Yeah, the only thing that really stands out to me is the... Why would Mr. Delight sound the alarm? While you are coming down to the wire and the whole court is being pressed against you because the game's a jerk in Japan of you remember to stay hydrated. I'm trying to think. Hmm. I think it's this one because why would Diddly D? Because let's see, let's go through everything just to make sure. All the way at the beginning. Hmm. Indeed, that's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. I was going to say, how would he know about that? It's because he has access to all, like, this... It's stuff he's heard about, about this case. And it's from his deductions. Not from what he firsthand saw. Only sounded once. Why? Because of that. Was wearing his mask, mask outfit, which is why he left no prints. I think we press on this... So that we can ask the question, why 
would he sound the alarm at all? That's the question. He would not be able to know that no guard was on hand at the time. So why would he press... Let's see. And the blackmail letter, the victim just simply mistook the letter. Yeah, my brain is saying this one. This one this one. Mr. Radme, about this last remark. You still don't get it, do you, Tract? You got it right for the wrong reason, really? In retrospect, I kind of feel the I'm revealing too much vibe in that statement. Because it, it, it just focused too much on the fingerprint part. And I felt like that one was the most, like, all inclusive of the fingerprint stuff. This isn't the time to be pressing the witness on every last statement. I'm afraid you're the one who still doesn't get it, Mr. Godot. What? Mr. Ratme, it seems you finally admitted that you were in the CEO's office on the night of the murder. How can you say that? Speaking of getting drunk, I remember that Bob Hoskins even admitted the live-action movie of Mario was so bad that he was drunk while filming. Huh. In retrospect, I can't feel that I'm revealing too much vibe in that statement and that statement alone. By the way, you press the wrong statement, you just lose. Considering that they really hammered in, you only have one shot, I kind of felt that. <laughs> Let's review your testimony, shall we, Mr. Atme? The button did not have any fingerprints on it. Why? Mr. Delight was wearing his mask to mask outfit, is that correct? Indeed, that's what I said. My deductions are absolutely foolproof. More like your deductions prove that you're a fool. You don't even uh, get to open the pause menu if you, if you press the wrong statement. I'm sorry, whatever do you mean? For some reason, I'm starting to get really thirsty. When exactly did we learn the fact that Ron Delight was dressed as Mask to Mask when he went to the scene of the crime? Th that was, um, it was just a few hours ago. Back when my sixth cup was looking at me with a cold stare. Huh? Oh, did I forget to mention it before? I'm sorry, I just never had a chance to mention it up until now. That's also how you know if you got the wrong proof in the BTTTT. I don't know if that one is wrong, if you don't know. I don't know that it's some... I don't know the, the abbreviation to that one. <laughs> That's right, the defendant had yet to tell anyone else this fact before this morning. Therefore, the only people who should know this are those who have been watching this trial. Do you understand now, Detective Atme? There's no way that you should have known about that! Uh, oh! You are in the next courtroom being tried as mask to mask. So then enlighten us! Just how did you know about that piece of information? Dude, what an absolutely brilliant way to reveal the contradiction. C come on! This detective must have known about it. He probably had plenty of chances to find out beforehand. And those chances that I wanted... And it's those chances that I want to discuss next. That night, Mr. Delight was wearing his mask to mask outfit. There's one and only one way for Detective Atme to have found that out. Only one? One way, you say? Please recall, if you will, Mr. Delight's testimony. When I entered the office, there was a suspicious shadow there. For a second, my client witnessed the real killer. But Mr. Delight never saw his attacker, so there's no way to tell whether or not the real killer was Luke at me. It's with the statement that I'll turn this case on its head. Do it absolutely brilliant well to reveal the contradiction. Really like this case. It is really cool. Next one's even better. No, please, not 3-3. Three, three. Isn't that the one that apparently, if it was originally supposed to appear in Justice for All, and if it had that one chat, it would be like, ah, I would have hated the game. For me, 3-3 three, three has some uncomfortable moments, but also some fun OTT ones. I'll be interesting to experience them. D just what are you trying to imply? Mr. Delight saw the real killer, correct? Now if you turn the statement around, it stands to reason that the real killer had also seen Ron Delight. Impossible. If he had a more ambiguous silhouette, it would have been so much harder. 
Detective Atme, you saw Master Mask at the murder scene that night. You saw him when you killed King Bullard and assaulted Ron Delight. That was the only way you could have known what Ron was wearing. What? Is he dying? He's doing a jig. <laughs> Take a good look, everyone. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself. Here I am, the tragic clown. That's the same line you gave yesterday. But I think there's a little more meaning behind it this time. The uncomfortable moments outweigh the good for me for the for three three, and it looked more ambiguous on the original Game Boy. Well, Game Boy Advance, but I could see that actually. Yeah, I think there's a little more meaning behind it this time. <laughs> what an awfully complicated incident! King Bullard was blackmailing Luke at me, who was in turn blackmailing Ron Delight. And upon killing his blackmailer, Luke at me tried to frame Ron Delight. He then claimed to be guilty as Master Mask in order to escape his true crime. And to that end, he came up with this plan. To use the double jeopardy rule when making his alibi. Um... At any rate, it would seem we've finally found the truth. Excuse me? I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man. Besmirching him with the title of murderer. Don't ignore me! Oh, I didn't realize you were there. Why wouldn't he be? Um, about the verdict... I know. You never committed any murder. That's right. I'm so glad you understand that, but... I am... I really am Mask to Mask! Once again, Bullard, I use blackmail to blackmail the blackmailer. Huh? So thanks to that trial yesterday, I'm innocent now, right? Huh? What was it you said? Double jeopardy? Now that you mention it, I've been careless. Careless? Um, what do you think, Mia? As a defendant says, the rule of double jeopardy is absolute. A defendant can never be tried twice for a crime in which he was once found innocent. Then, Master Mask is really innocent? It would seem so. For now. F for now? That's actually a neat way to wrap it up so that your defendant doesn't get thrown in jail anyway. Now then, this court finds the defendant not guilty. It's kind of fun to watch this case with the benefit of hindsight. The first time you really wonder what everyone's deal is. It was really wonky. Especially for the moments when <laughs> when I was accusing Desiree of being masked to mask. Boy, this is really lucky. Wait, er, uh, I... This isn't so good after all. You see, the thing is... I still am Master Mask, after all. But now your wife's gonna know, isn't she? I think this is where you see the picture. Oh, yeah, that one. But you did that too? It wasn't just me? <laughs> yeah, at first I thought, oh, what if she wants him to be innocent so that because things... I forget exactly what it was. I had a really good... I thought, like, initially that she was stealing stuff for the thrill of it, because she was a thrill seeker. But she was really in love with Ron, so we wanted to defend him. So she wanted Ron to be uh, uh, innocent as well. Thanks, Mia. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Yeah, it's because Maya doesn't call on me much these days. Oh? I'm just joking, Phoenix. Don't take everything so seriously. But on the other hand, Maya, she seems kind of torn these days. You mean about becoming the master of the Curing Channeling School? Becoming the master means saying goodbye to our mother. Misty Fay, right? Watch over her, will you, Phoenix? Of course. Well then, see you around. Mia. Ah, Mr. Wright. Um, I, uh, I don't know what to say. Congratulations, Mr. Delight. L thank you so much. Uh, no, wait. Nothing really matters anymore, though, now that all this has happened. Come on. Excuse me. Just be happy already. Maya. You've been cleared of the murder charges and got off as Master Master Boot. But in exchange, I lost everything. Huh? What do you mean? Stealing security information from KB Security, becoming Master Mask. I did it all for one reason. For her. You mean your wife, Desiree? She hates criminals more than anything. 
Come to think of it, she was once held hostage by some robbers, wasn't she? Mr. Wright, who was that big boobied woman just now? It, 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 you would expect somebody to comment on it. She always said how she hated sneaky criminals. I knew that. I knew that, but once I got fired from KB Security and lost all the money I had, she wouldn't have any reason to stay with me. I thought she would leave me for sure. So that's why you became Master Mask? Yes, but it's all over now. A broken bowl can never be put back together! Th that's not true, right, Nick? Right. Really? Can we go back to the way things were? You'll be fine, and Nick can prove it! I can? I kind of wish I would. you would check with me first. Mr. Delight, even if a bowl is broken, there's always a way to put it back together. Is it? Is it the urn? Is it the urn? Is that what we... Is it... I assume that it's the urn, I assume? I assume, because he... I was just going to say, it's just like a broken bowl can't be put back together, but this urn has been broken three times now. Well, two times. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the urn. The sacred urn? Desi was the one who found this. Desiree, your wife, she always believed in you, Ron. That's why you'll be fine. You don't have to worry about anything. Ah, there you are! M Miss Delight! You did it, Ronnie! You're innocent! I'm so happy! Th thank you! I appreciate that, but, um... I suppose you don't want anything more to do with me, do you? Ronnie, why didn't you talk to me about what was going on? I had no idea you'd quit KB Security. I never imagined that you were really messed to mask either. Miss Delight, what are you going to... Uh, going to do now that you know. You're not going to really leave him, are you? Come on, it's obvious, isn't it? How could I ever let a wonderful man like him get away? After all, my bike's really fast. So fast that there's no way he could ever get away. Um, but didn't you say that you hated criminals? Hmm? Oh, I only hate people who act all cowardly and sneaky. Like that detective. I see. My Ronnie went and declared his crimes before he committed them, like a man. I just love a man who's so chivalrous. Chivalrous? I knew I was right about you. Every day I spend with you is filled with thrills and excitement. D Desi. Desiree, you really do love Ron, don't you? Nicky boy? Yes? I'm really glad I asked you to defend my Ronnie. Thank you so much. I'll never forget what you've done for us. Oh, well, um, take care of yourself. You too, Nicky boy. Oh, I can feel my face going red. <laughs> oh, great, here comes the Slapinator once again. So Ron actually was Master Mask. Yep. Up next to the anime outtakes for this case. Is that... Is that oh, I guess the anime would have outtakes. <gasps> Talk about bad timing. Mr. Nick, how could you? With another man's wife in front of Mystic Maya. No, 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 I'll never forgive you. Never. <laughs> and then she killed him. And then she murdered Nick and was thrown in jail. So just as the case came to a close, so did my consciousness. Ron said, a broken bowl can never be put back together. But I know that's not true. I mean, just look. Here's a perfect example of one that was put back together even better than before. That is an adorable picture. They're so happy staring at their paint-splotched sacred urn. <laughs> And now for the fun part of looking over the, uh, the cover for the next case. Why does that guy have a scouter? Why is Maya a maid? What? Recipe for turnabout. There's a guy with a bull cut and a scouter. Maya is a maid. And another maid in the bottom right hand corner. Next up, Pearl's little sister colors the urn. That would have to be a really little sister. Wasn't a fan of this one. That was the picture I was talking about. I actually thought it appeared in this case. In the continuing tragedy of the sacred urn. <laughs> Very interesting. Well, apparently this is a not fan favorite, at least of this chat, with uncomfortableness abound. But we'll have to experience that uncomfortableness next time, as we've actually gone for three hours. Ah, didn't expect it to go that wrong. Hmm. 
but now I shall give my initial thoughts of this case. It is very interesting. It is very interesting. I like that it begins with one case of a theft, and it's like, ah, it didn't include a murder, and then uh, halfway through it becomes murder, and your defendant gets uh, charged with murder again, which is kind of hilarious. And, like, looping around with the various characters to try and find out the truth is very interesting. Luke at me was a, definitely a character. It was just like it was, it was just it was just interesting on how it all looped together again and again. The urn, Lordly Taylor, Damask, Luke at me, KB Security just went round and around, and I liked it. It was very very interesting, and all the characters were cool in this too. Desiree was cool, Ron was cool, Luke at me was an interesting villain for this one. And it's embarrassing, but I find Ron kind of endearing. It's not embarrassing. He, the, despite, it's kind of also funny that he's a bombastic, chivalrous-ish thief. But underneath it, he's a, a nervous wreck, which is hilarious. But yeah, this is a very cool thing. It also brought back Andrews, which was a, a nice surprise. I also like that it all technically brought back the urn as well. It's also kind of cool that it's the first second case of the series that while still technically revolving around Maya because the Curane Village exhibit and the and the urn, she wasn't on trial ever. She finally broke the curse. It's going to come back sometime soon, isn't it? She's going to be tried for murder. One of these days she's going to commit murder and get away with it. But yes. And I always prefer the case of Morley Gray defendants rather than the innocent Will Powerses who are barely related to the case at all. <laughs> eh, I kind of like them both. Not that it isn't nice to have the variety. But yes, this case was very nice. I personally found it more intriguing and interesting than the first case of this game. Even though the first case of this game was also kind of interesting in how things went about, the villain of it, Wright being on the stand, you playing as Mia, it was definitely interesting. But this one was more intriguing and thought-provoking, probably because we actually got to go and gather evidence. This case better be the top 70% of your Super Duper case rankings. Maybe, it's definitely interesting. Wait, no. Top 30%. <laughs> Frank Sawwitch is the best character in the entire trilogy. Apparently he comes back in Investigations too. I hear, which is just interesting. But yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels, an edited content YouTube channel that I actually have some content coming to soon because I voiced a script. I just need to make the assets and then ev edit the video. And then, of course, for the people here, eventually I will make the super duper list countdowns of the trilogies and then combine them all and rank them against each other as well. That'll be interesting someday. It'll happen eventually. I swear. And then, of course, if you want to watch me stream these games on YouTube, I have the Neon... Oh, I forgot the name of the channel. The edited content YouTube channel is Neon Icy Wings. I am a fool. Then there's the streaming YouTube channel, where all of these streams also get uploaded to as archive footage, just so that it exists and also doesn't d destroy my hard drive by being there forever. And that is Neon Icy Games. And if you prefer to watch me on Twitch, so long as it doesn't implode someday from Amazon's evil, the twitch.tv slash Neon Icy Wings. And then... One one was excellent, and I hate how people don't like it because it's not filled with exciting twists and turns. It's a very nice beginner case. <laughs> We're rooting for you, Neon. Yay! And then for other things, if you want art from me, like my little character in the corner, as well as the art in the end screen, you can follow me on various art websites and social medias like Twitter, Tumblr, DeviantArt, Newgrounds, Pillowfort, and Inkblot, links of which can be found in my link tree, linktr.ee slash neoniceywings. Also in my link tree are links to my writing at Archive of Our Own, because writing is fun and ideas come and batter my brain, as well as a link to my Patreon, if you want to throw a few dollary dues my way so that I don't die as quickly to the evils of the American system. But, I can't even remember the first contradiction. <laughs> but if Frank is kind of a tutorial character, yeah, by all 
but I know I should don't, uh, didn't have much trouble with it, which is probably why I'm very invested in the series now. That's always nice. It, the, it is a very easy case, but at the same time as the first thing of the case, you kind of want that to be the case, so that people can ease in, know the mechanics, and then uh, rise with the curve of the difficulty, because it definitely gets more difficult as time goes on. Yeah, it accomplishes what it's set out to do. Exactly. But, yes... Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I hope to see you dudes next time. Not sure if I'll stream this or Breath of the Wild next time. Depends what I'm feeling for. But, yes, thank you very much. Hope to see you next time. Bye, bye.